They need to regather quickly as a team, have a very small tactical chat together. Um, I, I think this pause was was much needed. Yeah, I think in for White Rabbit Gaming, there's a bit of there's a bit of nervousness here, which is surprising because there's nothing that tops the the LAN experience. I mean, that's the pinnacle of competitive gaming. So if you can do it on LAN, you should be able to do it online. But we all know it doesn't always work out that way. And so I think they're just feeling the nerves at the moment. And I think one thing that I've noticed uh, with this roster at the moment is th it's the hesitation especially on the back end, not really knowing when to commit, not really knowing when to go for the clear. Sometimes two players going for the same ball and, you know, they end up colliding parts and ruining things for each other. Or, or they do win the ball, but because they've both committed, nobody's in the goal anymore, you know? Small things like that can cost you. And I think White Rabbit Gaming, they just need to trust themselves a little bit more. They just need to open up those comms and, and, and you know, go back to the unity they had uh, a few weeks ago at Comic-Con. Yeah, I mean, this is a strong outfit, right? You, you've got Weak Casper, of course, super strong from last uh, season as well, the first RLCS season. And then, of course, backed up by Kino and Friction, two superb players in their own right as well. And so just Astronic possibly coming out a little hungrier today. And, of course, Swiss, we know, can be grueling. Do White Rabbit Gaming, they don't want to lose this first round because, of course, that means they've got to now play a fourth and play a longer Friday. And of course, you and I, we saw what happened when we covered that day one Triple M, a long Swiss stage. It's brutal. Yeah, mentally grueling. Uh, word is from the referee that we're going to restart from a kickoff. So uh, we should be back in action pretty soon. But just to answer your question, yeah, it's 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 the most grueling format. And that's exactly why, you know, teams get so much respect for it. I know people don't like the Swiss format, but it is what it is. Oh, we Casper with an opportunity there to really put White Rabbit Gaming in the in the lead. And uh, for one reason or another, completely whiffs the ball. And uh, Strutik will take it the other way and uh, gets a demo for good measure as well. Yeah, it's just, you know, unfortunately, they're weak, Casper. They're not able to take that shot as well. Friction also getting faked out by Strutik, who is just dribbling that ball nice and slowly out of his own box. And so what I like to see from Astronic here, I think, is their maturity, right? They don't rush the ball. They're slow. They're patient. You know, they actually have such a good idea of how they want to play against this white rabbit game inside and they're doing superbly well there's no kind of you know errors that they're making there's no opportunities for white rabbit gaming to you know economize on those we cast for taking that shot kept out by snoozy snoozy being one hell of a player in this series thus far yeah, he's been a nice man in, in the net in the sense that he's been as cool as, a, as an ice cube, genuinely speaking. He's got veins of steel at the moment. Just Specs now taking it the other way, gets bumped by Kino, and that gives Friction the time he needs to get a clearance, but it wasn't a good one. Luckily, they live to fight another day, but for White Rabbit Gaming, it is getting dicey with just two minutes to go. It seems like their goal is the one that's been peppered, and the momentum has slightly shifted here since the restart. Yep, and uh, White Rabbit Gaming now seem to be holding this ball here in an offensive third. Can they bring it down? Friction putting it out to Kino. Kino taking the shot. There, there it is. Friction also getting the beautiful demo out onto Strudik, which allowed Kino just to get the shot in. And they pick up one more goal and take the lead. Yeah, it's effectively an uncontested shot from one of the most talented players in the country. He's going to score 99% of the time from that position. It's a fantastic finish. And we've got a series on our hands because it is now 2-1 to White Rabbit Gaming with uh, just over 90 seconds to go. Can they hold it out? We are going to find out. We, Casper now, with a great little dribble over one, gets past two. Can he get past the third? He doesn't need to because Kino says hello. And uh, it's 3-1 to White Rabbit Gaming. Oh, and effectively what White, uh, sorry, Wee Casper wanted to do there as well as he went straight for the bump in the box. He didn't find Strudik, but of course he forced Strudik to jump and allowed Kino to put that one in. So Wee Casper knows exactly what needs to be done after releasing that ball. Up by two here, White Rabbit Gaming have finally given us a ball game. Yeah, they, they look much better they look as good as they've ever been in this series so far compared to the the first game the second game and now the third it's almost as if they've gone through a gradual development if you will in this series so it's it's good stuff for white rabbit gaming but stratic here letting them know that they're not out of the woods yet and they've still got to let sure that make sure the complacency doesn't get the better of them although it is friction now taking it the other way gets it off the oh he was looking for a cheeky little pass off the wall there but unfortunately it didn't come off and now just specs will look to take it the other way a big wolf a big, big wolf by Wee Casper there. 
And my oh my, he's lucky that didn't end up in a, a, a goal for uh, Astronic. And just by the way, Snoozy has a savior medal as well. That's how much work he's been doing at the back here for Astronic. Absolutely yep. wall at the back for our team in orange there, just specs. Tries to get a ball to the midfield, alas, kept out there. I think there was friction that did pop it forward. Oh, Kino not able to find a nose to that one. Friction bringing it down. Astronic, though, they need to try find two and they need to do it quickly. Yeah, 23 seconds to find two goals against a WRG roster that we all know is capable of, of putting up a really good fight. Kino now is the last one back, but luckily he doesn't have that much work to do because of a bump from his teammates on the opposition player. Now, we, Casper, will calmly take it into the air and uh, kill a bit of time off on the clock and try to go for some style points to end off game number three. White Rabbit Gaming get a point in the series and, uh, well, tell me about it, Muz. Oh, man, well, White Rabbit Gaming finally found in their feet, taking 12 shots there, Triple M. Of course, Kino getting beautiful shots, but of course, those shots and goals were able to materialize because his teammates were able to get bumps and demos there in the box. So you can see already more structured play coming out from WRG. They're finding those bumps and those demo plays in the box as well. We saw Wee Casper. He understands what he has to do. Make a pass, get the rebound, and then bump someone in the box. You know, yes, Snoozy jumped and didn't get demoed, but it allowed Kino to score. And so White Rabbit Gaming, things looking much cleaner for them. They're triple M. And, you know, he has our potential reverse sweep, right? Yeah, I, I certainly hope so. I mean, White Rabbit Gaming, I think, were, were the favorites coming into this, and I hope they prove us right. But listen, no disrespect to Astronic because they've brought the fight, and uh, that last game doesn't change anything. They've been fantastic today. Despite the chaos in that first game and conceding three goals, they did score five, you know? So uh, in total, I think they've still scored the most goals in the series so far. Somebody can correct my maths. But uh, yeah, Utopia Coliseum is where we will find out who is the better of the two. Oh, I mean, still, we're here on match point, right? Of course, Astronic can win game number four. But I think White Rabbit Gaming, they, they, they want a bad Triple M. You know, we've seen now. They've absolutely come to play. And already, we Casper, they're taking a shot. We Casper will get the open here on Utopia. Yeah, I listen, we've seen a goal in six seconds. Now we've seen one in seven seconds. We Casper absolutely alert and sharp on the kickoff. And that's what you want at this level. Moments like that, that have not really got much to do with tactics or team dynamics or anything like that. It's just about you being sharp as an individual and taking advantage of any sort of space and advantage you can find. And that's what you want. That's what you need sometimes to give you the edge, especially in the case of White Rabbit Gaming being behind in the series. So fantastic start as Wee Casper now looks to get it away. Snoozy keeps it up and just Specs looking to go for a play. Uh, Wee Casper will take it the other way and uh, it's still 1-0. Oh, and Snoozy, he, he's played phenomenally well this series. White Rubber Game and take the shot there. Weak Casper, it's going to go to the left-hand flank. Just Specs there, has to keep it out. Snoozy being that committed third man at the back, though, doing superbly well just to thwart any advances from White Rubber Game. They're keen to take the shot, though, as well. Friction finds that demo onto Snoozy. No goal able to come out of it. Now they've got to scramble to get back by Weak Casper in the middle of that field able to pop it out snoozy can he get the dunk yes should be a pretty easy save there for kino and strutting from the left hand side will not be able to advance his team too much further yeah uh listen it's been quite a controlled start quite a poised start from both teams a complete contrast to that game number one it's friction now looking to make something happen here and uh white rabbit gaming circling like vultures in the half of uh Astronic here trying to look for an opportunity. Look at how high they are up the field. Nobody's back. Everybody is within the half of uh, Astronic, or at least they were. Just Specs now plays it across and Snoozy looking for something, but he can't get anything. So he opts for the bump on Fiction instead. And the recycling of possession here from Astronic shows the desperation to try get back into this game. Yeah, and just no boost in the tank as well. You know, players get up and then unable to hold their aerials up there friction takes a shot there snoozy once again keeping out this ball I, I i'm slowly becoming a big snoozy fan he's doing so incredible he keeps out so many shots from white rabbit gaming as well friction takes the shot though snoozy oh this man is absolute magic in the net triple m yeah, Snoozy is putting on an absolute clinic here. MVP by far for Astronic, in my personal opinion anyways. We Casper now taking it the other way. It's uh, Kino 
uh, moving in reverse, trying to see if there's any opportunity for perhaps a, a chance there. But uh, White Rabbit Gaming look very comfortable. Again, look at them on the on the halfway line all camped. Well, one of them is back now, but they, they just know when to drop back and when to apply the pressure, put their foot on the pedal. And they've got a good read of this game, it seems, right now, as Kino takes it the other way, looking to make something happen. Unfortunately, unable to. Snoozy with a demo and a clear. And Strutik, if only he knew that there was an open net waiting for him, I think he wouldn't have been as casual there. Yeah, advantageous respawn to Weak Casper as well. Does pop up on the left hand side. We're talking about Weak Casper. Wow, he gets a goal there from the right hand side as well. So straight from respawn, takes this ball all the way downfield, beats out Strutik and Snoozy to score there on the near post. Yeah, and it's unfortunate for Astronic because they literally nearly scored at the other end. There was nobody in the goal. If only, if only somebody thought to take a shot there. But, uh, you know, it's uh, it seems a lot easier from up here than it is down there where the players are sitting. Anyways, Lee Casper takes it the other way now. And uh, it's not really leading to anything for WRG, but it's not the end of the world because they are 2-0 up with two minutes to go. It's uh, a great play from Snoozy. And again, being so involved, it's Strutik now, and somehow Friction is able to get, uh, I don't know whether it was a tire, a bonnet, a piece of the car, perhaps, but something has touched <laughs> that and kept it out of the net. And uh, we've still got a game in our hands. And you've got to love that double demo that came out as well. Astronic Esports are doing so well. Oh, Friction! Not able to get that one in. Finds the near post as well. Just Specs here with the counter attack. You can't find a second man in the midfield as well. Kino has to keep that out. Strutik takes the shot. Snoozy though from the right hand side. He's going to find the nose of Kino. Pops it down to the midfield there. We Casper underfoot. Strutik. Clinical save though. And Snoozy once again. Active defense. Doing so superbly well. Triple M. The scoreboard doesn't really tell you how well Astronic have been doing in their own defensive third. Yeah, I think uh, the sign, ooh, Kino with the shots, it's off the crossbar and uh, doesn't lead to anything. But I was gonna say the sign of a confident Rocket League player is, uh, well, Friction has just demonstrated it. What a beautiful goal. It's uh, a, a goal from almost out of nowhere. The demo from Kino, I think, was the reason that goal went in because again, it just destroyed the defensive organization of Astronic and uh, left them for dead, essentially. And once again, Wee Casper looking for a bump play in the net there as well. So just Wee Casper taking that experience that he has and just making sure that he just allows his team to play such good Rocket League. Friction they're putting in a third for White Rabbit Gaming. And now Astronic feeling the pointy end of this kebab stick. They're down by three with not too much time left, Triple M. We are going to go to a game number five. Yeah, barring a miracle in the next 20 seconds, it's it's almost certain that we are going to go to a game number five. And what I would say is that even though the scoreline isn't flattering to Astronic, listen, they have played well here. It's just been, again, fine margins that dictates the result and dictate the narrative. And so I think they should really keep the momentum in the next game. They shouldn't they shouldn't change their, their game plan too much. Ooh, Kino, ooh, off the crossbar. Wee Casper comes to finish it off. And I think that completes the hat-trick for uh, Wee Casper. Oh, yep. Three shots, three goals for Wee Casper. 100% shooting rate there. Does pick up the hat trick as well. Beautiful Kino play just to get him into the box. White Rabbit Gaming will take game number four here. And ladies and gentlemen, a, uh, sorry, a reverse sweep is about to potentially take place here in our little best of five series here. Triple M, you know what? Your first official series here of the rlcs i don't think you could have asked for much better yeah i mean it's been a fantastic contest contest between both teams and look snoozy like you said with the with the clinical save there i was gonna say during the game before i got rudely interrupted by friction and his disgusting finishing that the sign of a confident rocket league player is the ability to defend whilst facing their own goal that's the epitome of confidence, knowing where the ball is, knowing that you have time and space in the ball and you don't need to panic and you can just make a smooth U-turn and control the ball and move it up the other way. That is the epitome of confidence, especially considering we are in a in a RLCS event. So fantastic display of confidence there by Snoozy. Listen, just Specs and Stratic, it is what it is. It's a, it's a difficult result. Hopefully they keep their heads up and, and give us a good game five here. You know, you see, at the end of the day, uh, Triple M, what's going to separate kind of great teams from the good teams is having experience, having that grit and understanding how RLCS works. Everyone at White Rabbit Gaming, they know that. They've been here before. 
they've tested their metal. Astronic Esports, they need to now test their metal. And yeah. so they were up by two in those first two games. But of course, White Rabbit Gaming said, nope, that ain't going to happen. And I'll watch. And now here we go. Potential reverse sweep time. Do White Rabbit Gaming have what it takes to dig deep and close this one out? Yeah, well, big teams get big results. And for White Rabbit Gaming, this is as big as they come, at least to start off the weekend anyway. Strutik now looking to play it across. Just Specs gets a hold of it. But uh, it's now all down to Snoozy to make something happen. And he does. He actually does, but unfortunately, Wee Casper's there to uh, be the party pooper to what could have been such a beautiful move. Uh, it's Kino looking for a shot, and Snoozy uh, gets it the other way. I'm, I'm confused. What's going on? The ball's moving so slowly. <laughs> Goal! Oh, okay. Kitchen. Nice, beautiful. yeah. I, you know, and to and to think that this co uh, sorry to think that this game was called right supersonic battle cars. You know, nothing was supersonic about that at all. Twenty eight kph, the absolute slowest goal possibly recorded here in the RLCS. But it still means that White Rabbit Gaming are up by one here in game number five. Champions Field, Triple M. This is it. Yeah, the pattern of the series has been White Rabbit Gaming going 1-0 up very early on in the game. This time it wasn't in 7 seconds or 6 seconds, but it was uh, within the first minute, nevertheless. And uh, Astronic, they've really got to make sure that they don't let that early lead get the better of them. It's Wee Casper now, looking for a shot, gets firmly contested, and Stratic now will take it the other way. Fiction stops him in his tracks, but just Bex is there to continue the attack from where his teammate left off. And uh, some good pressure here from Astronic, but can they... Can they build something tangible out of it? And the answer is no. Friction now with an open goal and Stratic comes across. It wasn't open, but, you know, you'd expect him to, to cause trouble there. And he did, almost. You know, we, we, we've spoken all series long about just the defense of Astronic, but it has been so great, right? Friction taking the shot there, kept out by Stratic, just positioned well enough to stop that ball. And now Snoozy! taking that shot off of just specs my golly goodness there we go the equalizer find in the back of the net here from astronic just specs and snoozy beating out that one last defender from white rabbit gaming yeah it's a, it's a fantastic goal by snoozy just the awareness to know where to be and uh, just waiting patiently for the opportunity and now we casper immediately causing trouble and snoozy again after just scoring at the other end pulls off uh, uh, a game saving uh, block on the line and some you know some might say you know they knew snoozy when he was just a young gold player but those days are long behind him oh kept out snoozy oh my golly goodness keeping our keynote there as well maintaining the one one on our scoreboards triple m it i, I feel it will definitely go down to the wire uh, it, it looks that way if Snoozy's feeling up to it anyway. Snoozy dictates the rules, not us, but uh, at the moment it's just Specs. All jokes aside, he's been fantastic. And Kino is uh, playing it into fiction. It's Strutic on the back post, and this time it's somebody else for Astronic who saves it after what feels like ages. We Casper now playing it into Kino who gets it, and Strutic. Oh, it's Snoozy actually. It's Snoozy. I thought it was Strutic, but it's Snoozy, and unfortunately, Friction gets the follow up and uh, all the positive work on the back is undone by a follow-up from Friction. And just like that, White Rabbit Gaming take the lead. And Friction had the patience just to hang back there. He knew that Wee Casper and Kino were both in that box as well, trying to cause trouble. And Friction just hung slightly back to clean up. It did work out beautifully for White Rabbit Gaming. They take the lead here. And what has been a very much slow back and forth game number five, you think when you get to Champions Field here, it's kind of guns out. But Triple M, it hasn't really been the case right now. These three goals have been kind of slow, methodical plays that have allowed both these teams to score. But White Rabbit Gaming now do have this one goal lead. Yeah, it's an important one goal lead with uh, just over 90 seconds on the clock now. We're getting into the danger zone for both of these teams. And listen, 2-1 is a dangerous scoreline in Rocket League because don't let it fool you. You know, there's, there's still a game on our hands and ooh, a great save by Weecasp on the back post there. Uh, magnificent shot. I think it was Strutty who produced that shot, but I'm not really sure. Either way, it almost went in for Astronic and uh, some good work on the defense there by White Rabbit Gaming as they look to take it the other way. Just Specs now keeps it out. Bikino 
who I think he missed it. It's friction now, looking to make something happen, and uh, not really anything coming of this. Although we Casper going up, looking for a poke, and that almost went in. Snoozy, I don't know if he knew that was going to miss or if he was just praying, but he was just camped in the goal, waiting for the right time to come out and make a save. That was close. Uh, yeah, far too close. And White Rabbit Gaming have been prodding at their goals. Nothing been able to be sunk. And Astronic still here down by one. They need to find a way to score a ball here. Loose ball. White Rabbit Gaming not able to pick it up their friction. Try to take the shot there. Just Specs is back with Snoozy. Doesn't get the flick of Akina. Akina rushing up to push this to the corner. And Strudic has to play it out as he only has the 30 seconds remaining. Can Astronic try keep their dreams alive here in round number one send us to overtime doesn't seem to be the case right now white rabbit gaming still in possession here triple m yeah white rabbit gaming applying the pressure peppering the goal of astronic and with 19 seconds to go friction finds a way to direct it towards the goal kino oh it's a beautiful goal it was oh so close on the back post there i think it couldn't have been just Bex. it was stratic on the back post made a good recovery and a good attempt, but unfortunately it's all in vain because it's 3-1 with the 14 seconds to go at Champions Field. I think this one's done. It might just have been the nail in that coffin. Oh, Friction, get in that 50. Playing beautifully and Friction has had such a stellar day today in this round number one, of course, on our mainstream brought to you by ACGL. Clock is ticking down here. It should be White Rabbit Gaming. They pick up the reverse sweep and they pick up round number one victory. Yeah, I mean, it's it's a fantastic result for White Rabbit Gaming considering how badly this, this series started and how chaotic the beginning of the series was. I mean, to concede five goals in your first game, then lose the follow-up game after that and complete a reverse sweep shows great mentality. It wasn't just a land win. It wasn't just a fluke. It wasn't just a, a one-off thing that people are using to prove that this roster is good. There's potential. They've shown it here today again. Because experience means an absolute ton, Triple M and White Rabbit Gaming. They said, game number one, it's fine. We're shrugging it off. Game number two, it's fine. We are shrugging it off. Three, four, and five, we've got their number. Triple M, should we should we get the opinion of Altruism and see what he has to you know, make of that one? Yeah, where is Altruism anyways? What, what has he got to say about this bogus series that's just, unplayed, uh, just, like, just unfolded in front of us? I nearly had you guys like there with me with my late prediction onto Astronic there. That was close at the end. I thought we had it in the beginning, but what a series to start us off. I hope if you guys, this is the first time you're seeing SSA, there is hype here. You never know what is going to happen all the way to a reverse sweep in our first game of the weekend, not even just of the day. And gents, let's let's start with Muzz, all right? Muzz, you came in very confident in WRG at the beginning of this. And how were you feeling after the first two games, especially with the second one being in overtime? Oh, Ultraism, I was tense. They would, they, they did so superbly well, right? Snoozy, Strudic, Just Specs. They came off of their close call, ultimate victory. And they're like, wow, we want to prove something. Well, can I tell you, I'm a believer, Astronic, came out in that games one and two and they brought absolute fire to white rabbit game there it was so tense but the reverse sweep storyline i mean these narratives they're going to start writing themselves triple m we started with astronic being very very potent in that first game really taking it quite convincingly it was back and forth really intense both of the teams being more forward going than you know focusing on defense and by the end of the series it seemed that both teams were doing a stellar job on defense as you said a couple of times what do you think the change in mentality was it from both teams or did they both just kind of slow down I think they both kind of slowed down, especially after that first game. I mean, in the case of White Rabbit Gaming, you can't concede five ga five goals in a game of Rocket League and not, you know, turn it down a notch. You know what I mean? And in the case of uh, Astronic, they they knew they were in the ascendancy, so perhaps uh, you could say they got a little bit compla complacent. And that's not taking anything away from White Rabbit Gaming, but I think Astronic let themselves down towards the end there. I mean, they started off so strong, Snoozy putting in an excellent performance, MVP of the series for me, and uh, you know, it it just 
wasn't meant to be. But I, I agree with everything that Moose said. I believe in this Astronic roster. They've shown great signs of potential, not just last week, but in this series here uh, this, this this evening. So they they could go on to do something special. But White Rabbit Gaming, which is the better team today. And uh, yeah, I mean, it is what it is. Muzz, we saw at the beginning there was very heavily Astronic favored and the, the whole series kind of just seemed to swing the other way. WRG getting a little bit more solos in the defense, putting together some beautiful passing plays, Friction picking up a couple of really nice goals like that. Do you think that this is what we're expecting to see from WRG going for the rest of the weekend? Is this just the start of them proving and finding their feet as a team or is this basically just where we're expecting them to get to at the end of it and they're going to struggle for a couple of their matchups? No, I think, you know, a little bit of a sluggish start for them, but you could see as soon as they started, you know, putting more fixed plays together, we Casper gets bumps in the box, allows his teammates to score. White Rabbit Gaming turned it around. So yeah, game number one, definitely sluggish. Things weren't that hot for both these sides. The, the way goals were scored, it just nothing was that kind of, you know, assertive. It was very much just pinches and off the walls and, you know, hope the ball goes in. White Rabbit Gaming, you know, said to themselves, let's slow it down, let's play Rocket League, let's get bumps in the box, let's allow Friction or Kino to score, get a reverse sweep. And Triple M, you said that Astronic is looking good. They look like a team that can really start taking on some of their opponents. You know, White Rabbit Gaming only managed to get to the quarterfinals last time, Astronic didn't. Is this now a case of Astronic has managed to already improve just in the two weeks that they've been here. They had to come through that close qualifier. Are they another team that we really need to start thinking of as contenders for the top eight spot, even perhaps higher than that? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, when you put five past White Rabbit Gaming in the first game and then go on to take game two in overtime, there, there's something there. You know, I think that this roster has shown great signs of potential. Snoozy, like I said, was absolutely magnificent today and they've got a player in him that they can build a roster around and listen not taking anything away from his teammates they they played well as a team today i just think that what let them down similar to white rabbit gaming in the first two games it's almost as if they flipped they changed places they started to make a little bit more mistakes they started to be a little bit more hesitant in the moments that mattered the most and unfortunately when you're playing at this level all it takes is two or three mistakes to make the scoreline seem a lot a lot worse than than it actually was i don't think the scoreline was fair to them uh, in some of those games especially the last one like it, it was a lot closer than 3-1 we won. And it was one of our closest series here today so far. If you guys are just joining us and missed the intro, it is a Swiss stage to start us off on for this Friday RLCS action. Uh, obviously, three wins take you through to that playoff bracket. Three lose losses take you out of the competition. Some teams off to a really good start. Uh, may contain Nuts, Orlando Pirates, Red Crown, all managing to pick up 3-0 victories in their first round. Uh, reforms taking down Lupa Rosso the same way. ATK, a very close series there. L going down two games to TKO and then managing to pull it back to win that 3-2. We just saw Astronic nearly clinch it out against WRG. Bros looking very powerful, managing to pick up the 3-0 victory over Orion Esports. And 3-1 the victor for Apex over SBNR. So very close. Some of the games very one-sided as we expect, especially at that top of the table. But in that middle, it really is getting murky straight away. Uh, we have then wrapped up all of our games here for the first round of the Swiss stage. And so we're going to quickly figure out what the next games are, come back with a little bit more action. We're going to have Greybeard in the, the booth with uh, Triple M for this next game. Unfortunately, Muzz, you've got some load shedding that you need to dodge at this stage. So your final thoughts, Muzz, on this first one and what we expect to see for the rest of the weekend? Uh, superb Rocket League. Absolute great. I think, you know, we're going to see a lot of those teams that you mentioned have been fighting through open calls and closed calls. They're going to cause more upsets than I think anyone cares to mention. And so I think it's just going to be a weekend of crazy Rocket League. This is SSA, of course. And uh, yeah, guys, stay tuned. This is only going to be the best stuff you're going to watch this whole weekend. All right, guys, we're going to be back in just a couple of moments. Don't go anywhere. Get a, a drink if you need to, because we've got lots of Rocket League here for you tonight. But we will see you in just a sec.
Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. This is game number two, or at least series number two here in SSA. It's the Fall Cup. It is our second one, just if you don't know what the new names of RLCS look like. We're joined by Triple M again, who uh, still a little bit worn out from that first series. And of course, the wonderful Greybeard. You are getting to be one of the casters instead of the hosts this time. How are you feeling about coming back for SSA? All right, listen, it's fabulous. And, and and my big problem is whenever I see somebody hosting, I go, oh, I wish I was doing that. <laughs> but then I see the people casting and I go, oh, I wish I was doing that. <laughs> um, but in whatever capacity, very excited. I was taking a long drive to get back here and watching that whole last series. And my word, what a, what a great start. I mean, an almost, almost out the gate with an upset. Fantastic uh, series to get the stream started. 
uh, I must admit. I I'm with you about it doesn't matter what cut past you're in here for because there's just so much action. You want to mm -hmm. be involved in this. If you're sitting there, I must admit, in that last series, I was sitting there going, oh my goodness, a reverse sweep for our Ooh. first game. And you want to be on the desk. Uh, you want to be shouting that action as it happens at every second of the game. And I, I love how you were still following it there, Grey Beard, and traffic mm. goes through for the demo at any <laughs> stage. Uh, but you, you put up a good point. The potential for upsets at every stage of this. So we nearly saw it there in the first mm. one. Triple M, oh, is this just going to be the story of the whole weekend? And, or is there going to be a couple of teams that you're like, nah, no one's going to upset them for the whole weekend? Yeah, look, I mean, I mean, May Contain Nuts is the only team that I think has a clear run, genuinely speaking. I think, yeah, there will be other teams that are favorites, con like considered favorites, but I think it's just a lot closer. It's just too close to call. And I think even though some series may end 3-1, if you actually watch the game and apply the context, you'll, you'll realize how closely contested some of those games are. So I really think that this is going to be a very competitive weekend. And I stand by what I said earlier. I genuinely believe anything can happen anything can happen i mean it's still early days right now we go and we split the pool a little bit more now the eight teams that did manage to win their first game going to be going up against each other right now and that's going to be may contain nuts taking on wrg orlando pirates got a tough ask to fight it out versus atk maybe atk not on their top form just yet but they've got a long weekend to prove themselves here red crown versus apex the game we're going to be getting to watch right now going to jump into that in a second and then reformed versus bros potentially reformed wanting to get that 2-0 up considering how well they did last weekend but bros looking very strong uh go ahead any games there that you're sitting there going wow besides this red crown versus apex the rest of them all cut and dry to you I don't know if they're cut and dry. Uh, where I'm, there's a there's a, there's three underperforming teams uh, in this season so far, and those for me are Bro, White Rabbit, and Apex. Uh, teams that I feel should be doing a lot better than they have been. So um, I'm, I'm from that point of view, pleased that, that WRG made it through. They made it difficult for themselves, but then Bro, Bro uh, against Orion, the the BS Gaming runners up, they three owed them. Bros have been they were no have been notorious for going to game five overtimes like making it really really difficult so that a bit of a confidence booster and then of course apex not even getting to the quarterfinals in the first regional um and they had some technical issues so that, that, that kind of wasn't great for them but um uh, so so uh, and they've all performed those three underperforming teams have performed well so so that's very good so uh, that, that's my Im immediate take on it. Otherwise, all the ones that should be winning have won. Indeed. Well, uh, on the lower bracket, quickly running through that, the guys who have lost their games, Astronic now going to mm. have to play against LMR, TKO versus Unity, Espionage versus Sun Moon Esports, and Orion Aces versus Lupo Rosso there. What teams are we expecting um, the Triple M to, to perhaps rally at this stage? Tough first round, but certainly have a good shot to come back into this. Yeah, it's it's difficult. I quite like the Unity roster. I think they have a good chance of going through. Sun Moon, they're they're a bit of a dark horse in that lower bracket. I think you know you you're welcome to disagree. And then obviously you've got to look at a team that I think has played really well in the series earlier. You know, I think mm. Astronic played exceptionally well despite making a few errors that made the scoreboard look a lot worse in some of those games than it needed to be. So I think they'll go through. All right, let's jump into this action right yeah. now. The big one that we've got here, Red Crown Esports, pre uh, previously Millennial Times Gaming, Zero, Sweaty Clarence, and Ram. And that was Greybeard, your big dark horse from mm. last week. Now going up against Apex Gaming, Lackstar, Original, and Defunct. And if we look at the head-to-head -head there, Red Crown being the ones to take less shots, but still get more goals in there. They're taking a couple more losses, even though they've got the better win rate. How are we feeling about this matchup? Uh, well, this for me is a big test for Apex. Like, are, are they back to where they, I mean, this was a top four, top five team last region, uh, last season in the last split. So uh, this is this is their chance to make it back. So oof, it's tough, but they can do it. And Red Crown, they've got some pressure now. They came out the gate, no one knew. Now, now everyone's expecting performance. How does that affect them? Oh, it's going to be interesting. Uh, Triple M, let's start with you for predictions. I'm very excited. And if you guys at home want to get involved in the predictions as well, you've got those hashtags underneath it, being able to go hashtag AIPX for Apex Gaming if you want, or hashtag CRWN if you think Red Crown going to be able to keep on their high performance from last time. But back to you, Triple M. 
how are you feeling about millennial times the ex-millennial times roster doing so well uh, versus apex who's going to take it home I think it's going to be Red Crown. I think Apex haven't looked like themselves, as Greybeard quite rightly mentioned earlier. So I'm going to go Red Crown. Red Crown, very confident there. And Greybeard, Defunct has that SSL title behind him, that tournament winner. That's a big name behind it. And Lackstar are an original, and certainly not people who are strangers to the NLCS stage. Who's going to be taking this one? All right, well, based on previous performance, I'm going to say Red Crown. And uh, I see the game is already underway. So uh, so I think, I, I mean, based on their performance in Regional 1, I do think they take a triple M. Yeah, absolutely. As we get into game number one, and the action is already kick, kicked off with 20 seconds gone. And now it's original with a oh. groove. Oh, that would have been a good goal. But unfortunately, Sweaty Swe Swe Clarence comes across and clearances it, clears it, clears it uh, pardon me. And uh, we're still no-no. Yeah, there was some also some disruption on the goal line. Sweaty Clarence did very well to dodge the bump and uh, in, ignore the ignore the uh, disruption and getting the clear there. So we remain no opening goal. Lackstar hanging back, cautious about committing too much, and now Sweaty. I like this Lackstar. Lackstar seeming a little very. Um, deliberate in his play uh, and, and being aware of what's going on and not just diving in great to see and it does remain goalless yeah and uh, you talk about somebody who's being aware some players are passive some players are, are, are more proactive right like some players prefer to just take charge of the situation and do what they want to do and then deal with the consequences later he's the opposite he likes to see what happens first and then react so it's important to have players like that sweaty clarence now with a shot oh. it's a, oh a good shot from downtown I just want to see here, orig original going, oh, I see, he was beaten to the ball, all ends up by zero, setting that up for Sweaty, defunct, can't rotate back in time, and it is Red Crown with the opener. Yeah, good, good goal there from them, taking advantage of the defense, not really reacting to the space in the middle and trying to prevent the shot, and now uh, defunct will take a chance there to try and cross it in, but unfortunately doesn't get too far, Lackstar in trouble Ooh. here, and zero scores. It's 2-0 in a very short space of time, Greybeard. And you know what? There was Lackstar. He's taking that third man role pretty seriously. But a pinch, a sort of weird pinch that went up and it just beat him. And uh, from there, not able to kind of get control of that ball. And from there, was pretty much downhill toward a red crown goal. They lead 2-0. So excellent start for them. They're going to be feeling good. And now Lackstar looking for something defunct. Gets it over. Original's coming in, but he's beaten to it by Sweaty. So Apex trying to make something happen on the offensive side, but not able to make it just yet. So definitely got their work cut out for them in the final three minutes of the opening game. Round two of Swiss. Yeah, it's it's been quite the start here. And again, a chance for them there to get back into it, but unfortunately not to be. Zero takes too much time there and almost gets punished. But luckily his teammates there to clean up. But Lackstar, an original with some great interplay, defunct with a, an attempt that gets thwarted away by Zero and then subsequently followed by Ram. But his touch wasn't great either. So they're still under a lot of pressure. Original now looks to bring in the service and Lackstar looks to receive. Unfortunately, not in the greatest of positions. Defunct still applying the pressure. It is a game here that we've got in our hands, isn't it? I like I like what Apex are doing. They're playing quite high up, taking tight rotations, keep the ball over in the red crown half. They haven't made it count yet, but eventually it pays off. Original shoot, saved by Ram, but it's still awkward for them. And look at this, everyone, original now finally going back. Everyone from Apex camped in almost that final third of uh, of red crown again it doesn't pay off and that's going to start getting frustrating for them if they can't make a breakthrough yeah but they've just got to keep it up and sweaty clarence ooh, he was on the horizon there but not quick enough to capitalize on the open shots and defunct will score uh as a result of it what a way to get back into the game it's not the best type of goal to score but it is a clean break with clean air and uh, an open goal to shoot into and he makes it 2-1 and, you know, it's, it's just reward for the pressure they were putting on. They weren't able to score through the pressure. It's finally a midfield interception, a block, a 50 that falls in the favor of Apex. Di uh, defunct goes up to finish it. Now they're within one game. That's a big, big confidence booster now that they're, now they're on the board and they can play. Yeah, and, and when you rotate properly, you apply yourself, you look for the 50s, uh, good things tend to happen. You create your own luck, as, as it were, and that's, that's exactly what they've done here to get themselves back into this game. 90 seconds to go now. It's going Ooh. back towards their own goal. Sweaty Clarence with oh. the shot, and Original with a calm and composed 
save there off the line. Well, not off the but line, ner just in front nervy, of the nervy times though, Lackstar. Not quite getting there. Clarence now heading towards the net. Defunct sweeps in from the side to get the clear. But it is now Red Crown with pressure of their own. The pressure has been coming quite hard from Apex, but now they find themselves pressed against their goal line. Struggling to get the clear. Lackstar now with the reset. Attempted clear. They don't get it out. Originals on his own. But Red Crown has no backup. At Ram almost finds the net. Big, big pressure. Sweaty Clarence finds it. Their pressure pays off. Two goal lead reestablished. Yeah, uh, it's unfortunate here. They did so much to get it off the line, but not enough to get it out their own half. And Sweaty Clarence, again, in the right place at the right time, gets some good service from out wide and puts it in the back of the net as easy as you like. This is a very important kickoff, even though it already feels like uh, the game is over. There's still 51 seconds left, so maybe there could be some sort of comeback here on our hands. Well, certainly Apex will be looking for it. There is plenty of time for them to do it, but they've got to be more consistent, more solid in their, in the build-up pressure play. Right now, it's on the wrong side. Ram! Almost bullying his way through. Doesn't find it now. Lackstar, very important touch. Gets it over to the other side. Sweaty should get back. And now the last 25 seconds. Time running out for Apex in game one. It hasn't been a disastrous game for them. They, there are certainly a lot of bright spots for them. But it is Red Crown who've had the better of the momentum, the better of the pressure, and as a result, better of the scoreline. Yeah, and, and also the interplay between the Red Crown players, uh, the Red Crown trio, has been magnificent. You know, Ram, Zero, and Sweaty Clarence all having their fair share of, uh, you know, possession. You know, it's very balanced. And Red Crown take the first game, three goals to one. Uh, what a big start this is for them. A great start for them. Both of these teams coming into this 3-0 three, three oh in their three oh in their first round, uh, in, in, in their first series. So both of them with momentum behind them. And it is Red Crown that continue that coming off their exceptional series in the first regional that we've spoken about in the fall open. So it's all with them. Apex, we've spoken about a Triple M underperforming team. And, 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 and now under the cash, but based on what I saw in game one, I fully expect them to make a comeback here. Yeah, they, they could make a comeback. And I think, as you rightly pointed out in the game, the problem isn't really with their overall game. It's just their quality in the final third, just a little bit of bad decision making, not really knowing where the positioning should be. It's reflected in the mm. shots as well, because Red Crown had 10 shots in this game, which is double what Apex had. They only had five shots and uh, Lackstar not getting any of them. It was his teammates that contributed. So it's uh, a rough time in the final third for them. And hopefully they can correct that going into game number two. And then I just need to correct something. A red crown did sweep in their opening series against Sun Moon. Uh, Apex taking espionage 3-1. So it wasn't a sweep there. They did lose a game in their last series. So, you know, if you lose one game in every series but win the series, that ain't bad. So they've, they've lost their designated game. And now can they win three on the trot to take it? I suspect it's going to be a lot tougher than it was against espionage. Yeah, and, and this Red Crown roster, listen, it's it's not going to be an easy run. I think we could see a, a five-game series here, but we'll, we'll just have to wait and see as Ram now looks for an opportunity early on. It's original with a good block defensively, dysfunctional now, still having to do some cleanup work. Sweaty Clarence with a great touch, and Ram directing it towards the goal, but that's an easy save for Dysfunct, and uh, not really anything coming from the early pressure from Red Crown here. I, Triple M, I, I, I'm forever going to remember that you called defunct dis, dysfunctional. Oh, Sweaty Clarence! They have been broken down at the back. Apex got to sharpen up, tighten up, and find their way. Get them. Oh, original. He should have had that clear. He misses it, and then uh, Sweaty ain't going ain't gonna to make a mistake there. Red Crown, one nothing up in game two. Yeah, it's a good start. Lots of pressure, lots of early momentum and peppering of of the Apex goal and it's paid off and Sweaty Clarence now looking for a play, almost a solo play there, but uh, it's thwarted and Defunct now will go up to the top and lay it down for Original who can't do much with it, but Defunct is here to continue the work that he started and Lackstar comes up and is unfortunately able to direct that towards the goal, but good pressure in response here from Apex uh, from conceding. They, they seem to be creating some sort of threat, but can they get a goal from it is the question. 
Well, they're back over and in attack. Original and Laxstar going for the ball. There's been a demo, but the ball cleared long distance before before he was removed from the map. So they do get a bit of breathing room and a potential transition into attack. Another demo in defense might set something up here. Zero's up. If he gets beaten, it's going to be terribly awkward. Sweaty spawns back in, I think. Coming round gets the clear and they get it out. But uh, positive signs for Apex. But so far, Red Crown on top of all of those pressure plays. Yeah, they are on top and zero here, looking for a nice play. He lays it off to Sweaty Clarence. What looked like uh, would have been initially a shot or at least something off the backboard was a nice, delicate touch to his teammate. But uh, unfortunately, mm. Apex didn't fall for it. Ram with the shot. And uh, oh, the follow-up from Sweaty Clarence is the one that goes in. And it's 2-0 to Red Crown. And both goals have come on the end of defensive misses. A defensive yeah. player going for the ball, not getting the touch to get the ball into safely or at least half a clear, and then just being pounced on by Red Crown. And they, they punish. They don't miss those opportunities, and it sees them two goals in front, and Apex now under massive pressure. Yeah, and the trouble is with those defensive areas is that oftentimes your teammates are expecting you to win that ball. So they're already transitioning to attack and trying to make a drive forward, and, and you've missed the ball, so now they've got to turn around and recover. It's chaos, but uh, it's not game over yet. Sweaty Clarence now does a decent job. Ram gets it away, and now Red Crown looking in the ascendancy again. But Laxstar stops the attack in its tracks and tries to take it the other way. It's with Original now. What can he do as he goes airborne with a lot of space and time on the ball, but doesn't really produce anything with it? It's uh, still 2-0. Well, the best thing that Apex have going for them right now is the amount of time left on the ball. Um, I beg your pardon, the time left in the game. So they've certainly got the time time to get ahead uh, or at least get these things leveled up and make it competitive. But uh, the struggle continues. Original has half a shot. Sweaty Clarence with a, oh, a messed up save. And this time it is Apex to pounce on the mistake. Yeah, it's, it's, it's absolutely, you know, pivotal to maintain your sharpness, maintain your awareness and, and not give up until you know that the ball is out of the out of the goal, right? He, he could have easily just drove away there thinking Sweaty Clarence is going to clear that, but instead he just lingered around and made sure that he pounced on any opportunity. And, and those are the moments that could sway the series the other way for Apex. But there's still a long way to go in this game. And Defunct now with a great touch into Laxstar, who directs it away from the goal. I don't think Original read what his teammates were trying to do there, but it's okay because they still got some pressure here. Laxstar with a oh. good shot and it beats two men on the front post and goes in to make it two all. And wow, what a game we have on our hands now. Yeah, lovely bump on the wall by Original and the finish there. And suddenly in the second half of the game, the back end, Apex coming to life, coming to life and under being, it wasn't a good first half of them. It was a real struggle conceding those two. They've now cleared the deficit, but where they've struggled and we haven't seen from them is a lead. And that might change the complexion of the game completely if they can take a lead. But before they do that, they're going to have to do some defensive work at the back. Sweaty's coming in, Lackstar. Doesn't get control of it, this time not being punished by Red Crown, but they still have the pressure. Zero weakly toward goal, can be cleared away. Original doing exceptionally well to touch it forward and suddenly put Red Crown under pressure, but a defensive demo will relieve it for now. Laxstar with another miss, and this is going to mean pressure for Apex, but Sweaty misses. Zero hits the crossbar, and Original gets the clear. Yeah, I mean, lots to break down there in a very short space of time. One minute to go, and they're still under a bit of pressure here, Apex. Two men going for the same ball. That's not what you want, and the pressure continues here. It's now on the front post with Original looking to get it away. Zero with a nice little touch, and the pressure has been impeccable from Red Crown. You, you almost feel like there's a goal coming here. It's original. There's one, but, oh, I thought there was one coming from original. He can't quite get control of it, but they do have the pressure. The last 35 seconds, and finally, we're seeing a period of sustained pressure, but they have to get back quickly. Original wins that little race. We'll get the clear. Sweaty, though, going to keep it in play. And this is one of those moments, the moments where Apex have been finding themselves in trouble of those, those defensive misses. They are, they're fortunate here. They keep it out. The pressure continues. Another miss. Oh, Laxstar got to sort out that radar. He can't be missing these balls in defense. Yeah, and with eight seconds to go, if this goes to overtime, you've got to wonder 
Is it down to those misses and will this affect the mentality of Red Crown? Oh, Zero with a late shot and Lackstar with the composure. Cooler than an ice cube to get across and keep his team in the game. And we're going to overtime. And what an important moment of the, of the series this is for Apex. They lose here, and it's a monumental it's a, it's a monumental task for them. So this this overtime far more important for Apex than it is for Red Crown, which is not to say that Red Crown aren't going to be very hungry to win it because if they can get Apex down to nothing, their job is almost done. So uh, high, high stakes overtime in play right now. Yeah, high stakes indeed on the Aquadome, and the Aquadome has come to life as Zero carries it the other way with a great bit of service, Ooh. and Sweaty Clarence somehow misdirects it, and uh, well, Ooh. Ram gets the follow-up, but it's not good enough for Lackstar. He is able to get that away. It's a bad touch, and Zero with the free shot mm. in the middle of the park. Oh my word. I don't know about you, Greybeard, but that feels slightly anticlimactic. To lose because of a mistake after some great defensive work is uh, very disappointing. Uh, this is tough for tough for Apex. Lack, Lackstar having a little bit of a nightmare out there. A uh, number of, of misses in defense, and there his rushed attempt to clear the ball passes it into the middle, opens it up for Zero, who again, making no mistake, they do take their opportunities. But again, let's look at uh, Red Crown from a, from a momentum point of view, from a run of play point of view, deserved winners there. 11 shots against just three from Apex. A better conversion rate, of course, from Apex, but my word, the pressure all coming from Red Crown. Yeah, the only positive for Red Crown, as you said, is the conversion rate, as well as the fact that at least they all got a shot on target this time, but it's only one apiece. So uh, not good at all. And this shows the mountain that is uh, against them. They've got a mammoth challenge that, that faces them in Red Crown. And how they go about things in this next game will be very telling for the rest of the series. I have a funny old feeling Red Crown have got this one in the bag, just based off the first two games. Um, I'm, oh, I, I think you're onto something there. I really, really want to see Apex fight this back, though. They are, they are a top four team. They should be a top four team, minimum top six. They should not be going out on a Friday night. And and and, and I want to see them fight back here and show that they have that they should be a quarterfinal team at the very, very least. So, but all the momentum with Red Crown, though. So uh, their work definitely cut out for them. Yeah, absolutely. As we go into game number three at the DFH Stadium, Sweaty Clarence wins the kickoff, but it doesn't mean anything because Defunk carries it the other way. It's Original looking for a touch into the middle and uh, Lackstar going up but not really getting anything from it because Zero gets it the other way. Good demo by Defunct, making sure that they have the numbers gain and uh, wow, very chaotic start to year early on. Is but it is. There are no goals in these opening 25 seconds. Defunct with a shot toward net. Ram having none of it. Gets the clear. Yeah, good touch towards his teammate there by Lackstar. Original now keeping up the pressure. That's going towards goal. Defunct misses it, but Lackstar is still there and he gets all of it. I almost thought he missed there for a second, but luckily they take a 1 0 lead. And you spoke about them not being able to take leads. Well, they've done it now. And finally, I mean, they've waited three games to do it. This is their first lead, unbelievably, and very important. And it was a chaotic start, but I like the push, the pressure, the urgency, the drive from Apex, showing a little bit of fight to, to stamp their authority here. And now it's falling for original toward the net. The net's open. Zero will get a touch to get a clear. Yeah, slightly misdirected there. He had an open net to work with. If only it hit it more towards the left. But uh, if buts and maybes don't really count in a series of this magnitude. And now Defunct looking to carry it on the right-hand side. Lackstar still has control of it. Keeping it up and keeping the pressure there. Original's going to go up. And uh, very risky. Oh. Defunct misses it. And uh, I was going to say that they're at risk of conceding here. And so mm. it's come to pass. Zero takes full advantage of the open space and uh, open net. Oh. Yeah, very much an all, or, an all or nothing kind of play there. Defunct as a third man, committing the entire farm on that play and coming up way short and giving up the lead we were just talking about. Yeah, he's put all his money and all his, his chips on the poker table and he's walked out empty-handed there. But still early on in the game, Sweaty Clarence now uh, in a bit of a chaotic situation there on the front post, but uh, it's still... 1-1, one, one. original now, looking for a shot, a bad touch, leads to an opportunity for Apex, and listen, I, I, I think they've been marginally the better team here, just based off this, this start. I don't know what you think. 
They have been, um, but uh, we, we sit a level. You know what? These teams have been relatively close, but throughout Red Crown have have just managed to pull away, be slightly faster, slightly ahead. And now, oh, okay, there's not gonna not gonna head goalward, fortunately for Apex. And Apex have just they just look like a team fighting from the back. Yeah, and, and uh, what I would add oh, to no. that is that oh, this looks dangerous. It looks dangerous, and Ram oh converts from a very long ball across the field from Sweaty Clarence. It's not often you see something like that. A beautiful diagonal ball played across the field, and Ram with a delightful finish. I think the story of these two teams is that, listen, mm. they've both been in control. They've both, you know, brought something to the table, but Red Crown have created the tangible threats. They've had more shots and targets. They've obviously had more goals, and uh, that's what matters at this level at the end of the day. Well, it is Swiss, and it's certainly not over for Apex if they lose here. But if they go down, if they go down in a sweep, the manner of that of that defeat is going to be frustrating to them. And and they've they've looked good in building pressure, but they've fallen apart at the back defensively, either playing too high and getting chipped over and finding themselves exposed at the back, or the defensive errors. And there we see Defunct driving by, driving by the ball in the corner, and it has made them so awkward, put them under so much pressure, and they just can't get the clear, and Zero just waiting for the ball to come out to them so they can continue the pressure. Ram with a shot from the halfway line is going to be wide. Original is there. They do finally get it out of their half but man are they making it hard for themselves yeah and uh, zero with a bit of mechanical work here on display ram picks up where his teammate left off directs it towards the goal and sweaty clarence decides uh -uh, i'm going back to make sure this doesn't end up in the back of the net and he does really well it's laxstar now who misses out and zero with yet another 50 ram with an open goal and he makes mm. a three and listen you spoke about the over committing i think it's compounded by the fact that this is match point they have to overcommit now they have to throw everything forward because it's now or never. Ah, do you know what? It's far too early to be committing that hard and throwing the kitchen sink. There is time to, to keep your head about you, build the plays, and be very deliberate about what you do. But they are in such precarious situation now. Two goals down, two games down, and a minute 40 to turn this to turn this franchise around. Defunct, a shot from long distance, read easily by Sweaty and cut out. And now Defunct going hard at the ball. He's beaten to it, just Lackstar at the back. And he's gonna have to, and again, not, not reading that cleanly, clearly, and allowing the pressure to continue. Original, does he win this race? He does. Can somebody get there? Defunct shoots, it's a terribly soft shot and easily saved away. And they are being plagued by issues right now at Apex and they might be paying the, the ultimate price for it, going down in a sweep. They got a minute left to find at least two goals just to get it leveled up. Yeah, well, a minute can be a long time in Rocket League and Ooh. Defunct has demonstrated that perfectly because the complexion completely changes. It's now a one goal game with 58 seconds to go. The composure to bounce it off the backboard and uh, just the boost management and the ability in these high stakes moments to convert from almost out of nothing. He's produced a magnificent moment from out of nothing. And his team are now slowly creeping back into it. They've only got 54 seconds there, but they only need one goal. And it looks like they might get it here. Oh, the demo, original can't get there. A lack star cleared out the net. A little bit of lack of communication on who's gonna go for it. And certainly a, a single goal in 50 seconds is a lot easier than two. And uh, finally, with that, that second Apex goal, Apex getting a beat in the air. They have been beaten consistently. Uh, Red Crown just being faster. There's been a demo. This might open things up. They're now down to the last 25. Up, uh, Original should get there first. Can anybody get the follow? Lackstar coming in support. Zero. Standing firm in defense. Gets one touch. Doesn't quite get the second. Lackstar. Oh. They're getting it there or thereabouts, but time running out for them. They're going to go down in a sweep if they can't turn this ball around. Get it to the other side. Zero with the miss, but defunct with the miss. Lackstar, can he get it over? He does. Does he read this? Can anybody get on the end of it? The clock's run down. We are zero clocking here, and that will be that red crown. Convincing 3 nothing sweep. Yeah, big win for a big team at this moment in time. Listen, Apex have the respect of the past. They have the respect of experience in history. But at the end of the day, you're only as good as your last game of Rocket League. And at the moment, they've got a lot of issues they need to fix if they want to, you know, be serious competitors this weekend. Now, listen, it is Swiss format. It's not the end mm -hmm. of the world. 
but I think this is an indication that this weekend is going to be a lot more competitive than people are perhaps expecting. And Red Crown, they're bringing the heat, man. They're continuing exactly where they left off last week. Well, that was the one big question for me is, is after their stunning performance last regional, how did they come into this one? Well, so far, three games, three wins. They've not yet dropped a game and they're looking as dangerous as ever. And yeah, Apex have got some issues to sort out, but let's not take away from the job that Red Crown are doing, looking devastating and uh, great performance from them, dominating performance from them. And uh, yeah, uh, perhaps uh, Ultrasm, uh, watching from the sidelines there. Uh, I was hoping for a far tighter matchup, but not to be. Indeed, at, at the beginning there, Red Crown took grasp of that game and just didn't seem to let it go at any stage. Despite the fight that Apex brought in at every stage, they looked all right. I found both teams making a lot of mistakes though. You know, there were many open opportunities from both teams, just goals that went awry, defensive problems, you know, people pushing up too far. And Triple M, at, at this stage, we said that Apex was one of those teams that has so much potential. Individually, those players have incredible high skills. What do you think is holding them back right now? I don't know. It's quite hard to put your finger on it because, again, like you said, it's a very talented roster, but for some reason, the cohesion is not there in the moments that matter. I mean, a few times in that game, they made so many defensive errors, so many whiffs on the front post, back post, etc., mm. that led to their downfall. And listen, let's not take anything away from Red Crown. They're a good roster. So this isn't just a case of Apex being bad and Red Crown just got lucky. No, Apex came up against a very good roster and unfortunately they just failed the test uh, early on this evening and early on this weekend. Listen, Red Crown are a difficult team to play at, at the moment and they mm. it seems like everything's clicking for them. So anyone they come up against is going to have a difficult time, bar maybe, you know, a, a couple of teams. 100%, you know, got to be with you on that one. The fact that last week, as they were known as Millennial Times Gaming, Greybeard, this is a team that has already come through. You gave them props from the first moment you saw them. Mm. What is it about here now Red Crown that makes you just so respectful of what Rocket League they can bring to the table? You know, it's I, I feel a little bit uh, blindsided by this team because I, I feel like I wasn't paying attention. Um, and when I saw the name Zero, Sweaty, Clarence, Ram, uh, all of them I've seen before and I, and I do like them. But but to see them play as a unit is unbelievable. And it's almost the, the, the direct opposite of a team like, uh, like White Rabbit Gaming. There are individual outstanding players, but they just haven't quite got, you know, uh, clicked as a team. Whereas this team, and, and I don't know what it is, or if, if it's just their personalities uh, 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 gel with one another, but just their cohesion as a team. And they just seem to very fluid in their play. Very fluid, it has to be said. You know, they're mm -hmm. getting those passing plays together. They understand when to hand off. Whereas Apex on the other side, there were definitely some double commits at every stage. Sticking mm -hmm. on this red count gaming there, um, Triple M, how far do you think they're going to carry on in this weekend? Last weekend, they managed to get all the way through to the semifinals, had a very tough fight up against, uh, I think it was May Contain Nuts that eventually knocked them out. But this weekend, do you expect to see similar sort of levels? Are we seeing their, their gameplay be at the level that they were last week or maybe even better? Yeah, I, I think they will make the semi-final again. I think they will be a top four team again this weekend. And the reason why I say that is because, again, against a very good Apex roster, who, yes, we know is going through some issues, they were able to create tangible threats. They had more shots on target in every game. They had more goals in every game as a result of that. So they're very clinical, but they're creating the chances. They are being effective in the final third. Rocket League is just one of those games where you can have loads of possession. You can look nice. You can look aesthetically mm. pleasing on the eye. But if you don't do anything with it, it, it doesn't matter at the end of the day and you get 3-0'd so it is what it is and the fact that they can do that to a team like Apex for me suggests that they are improving and they are improving at a rapid rate and I mean that's what makes people love SSA so much right is the fact that we come out with such passion and such tenacity I was watching Twitch chat there we've got even fans as far as the US starting to take uh, a massive love for the scene as much as we've got here and it comes down to the fact that teams are not prepared to give up at any stage and i mean apex is a really good team that epitomizes that the fact that they came through that close qualifiers came through as the top 
seeded from that. Rayleigh came out with a strong performance three games in a row without dropping a single series. Greybeard, now for them to step to that next level, mm -hmm. what is it going to take for Apex? They've got lots of Rocket League. You know, they're one game up, one game down in a Swiss format. They've got at least two games yet to go. What is going to be the difference for them to get through at least to that top eight? You know, I... I, I... I almost don't feel qualified to answer that <laughs> question because I, I'm just not entirely sure. Apex and Bros is another team where they're like they they should be better than they're performing right now, and I think it just comes down to they've got to figure it out themselves. Something's not quite something. It's the team dynamic they haven't got figured out. Get that sorted out, and 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 I think both of these teams will be doing a hell of a lot better. Indeed. Well, guys brings us to the end of the second round we've got a total of five series here for you tonight so at least three more games coming through and by the end of it we will have eight teams that will have qualified eight teams getting knocked out a couple of teams in fact four teams already on that one point away from going to the next stage to qualifying for tomorrow and of course on the other side four teams just about ready to say goodbye two teams going to be knocked out at the end of our next round we're going to have to find out who that is afterwards i'm very happy to say i get to relieve myself of the hosting duties i love doing it but i cannot wait to get behind the, the mic to cast some of this action as we wel welcome Greybeard back into the host role. Uh, and I'm gonna be joined by Jota for, sorry, not Jota, uh, for the next one. It's gonna be ES Proxy. She's gonna be taking on that hosting role. And Greybeard, you and I get to do this next round. What what sort of teams are we expecting? What What is your hope for this, that we, we're gonna see a big clash for the next round? Or are, are you still waiting to see how, how it goes and it doesn't actually matter at the end of the day who we get to see? Yeah, it does. I mean, I'm looking at the results coming in. We've still got a number of matches, four four of them, five of them still to go. So, yeah, you know, we're going to see which, which looks the most delicious, and then we'll, we'll, we'll bring that. Well, guys, I hope you are just excited. No, nearly, not even halfway through the night yet, uh, we've got lots of Rocket League action, so don't go anywhere. We're going to take a very quick break as the rest of this, these games start to wrap up. I know that we do have a 3-0 from Reformed over Bro so far, and Unity, Triple M, you're going to be happy to know, take the convincing 3-1 victory over TKO. The interesting stats that we've got so far is that WRG is currently one apiece against May Contain Nuts. So, SSA, really open all the way down in the top. Who even knows at this stage how many teams are in for contention, but we'll have to find out as the rest of the night continues just after this.
Welcome back, everyone, to the RLCS Full Cup for the SSA region, where, as we know, eight fantastic teams have already battled their way through the qualifiers to get them to the stage, to get them to this opportunity. And they will be joining our eight top leading teams currently in SSA, who have been dominating the competition and have definitely been giving us an absolute show. So all that's left for us today, just to sit back and enjoy it. Of course, my name is Proxy. I'll be your host for the rest of the day. And I'm joined, of course, by some faces. And I believe they've got names uh, <laughs> last time I checked. Uh, <laughs> Altruism and Gravyard will be joining you for this series and be bringing you all of the action. So Altruism, uh, as you've had an outfit change and as you've you know jumped into the caster seat, can I expect that you're going to be very excited for this next series? Oh, I'm always excited to get to see Orlando Pirates play. I must admit, uh, this was the old Bravado side and I was a massive fan of what they managed to do in the last season last year, where they came up from basically unrepresented at the beginning. They were the old water side. I mean, if we throw our, our, our minds back that far, they showed the biggest improvement out of any team. They got some international exposure and now we can get to see them with an even more potent roster than they've ever shown before. Love to see them play every single time they bring through so much. I, 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 I too am a, a little bit of a fan. I'll just keep it, I'll keep it, I'll keep it biased. I mean, I, not biased, but objective. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> but of course, Graveyard, as we know, we have an incredible series. We've had an incredible set of series already. I mean, that last game, as we took a look at it, especially with that little bit of a backwalk goal onto, I think it was in the last game. I thought there was a turnaround. I thought we were going to mm -hmm. go to a game number four, but these teams, they, they really know how to keep us on the edge of our seats. Well, we haven't seen any gargantuan upsets yet. Although SPNRs did lose to Sun Moon, which is which is which is an upset. SPNR is going to be very upset. Joe to the coach going to be over the moon. But uh, you know the the old MTG roster now Red Crown uh, sliding their way through their first two series, not losing a game. Uh, but now Pirates, Pirates having a tough game against ATK three two. So uh, this has the potential of being a very delicious matchup. Absolutely. And I mean, if we talk about, uh, let's actually take a look at a little bit of an interesting opportunity. As we know, we're going to be jumping into that game between Orlando Pilots and Red Crown. Now, uh, coming into today, jumping into today's games, you know, when we were taking a look at the overall points, they were about three points away from each other. Second and third place, respectively, Orlando Pirates sitting on those 16 points. Red Crown sitting on 13. And of course, as we take a look at the, the team comparison here, Altruism, you need to give me a breakdown. I mean, I know you've got a certain team that you are a little bit vying for, but how, how do these two teams compare? I must admit, I'm very keen to see Red Crown and how they managed to match up. This is a team that we did say was a dark horse last time. They really impressed me last or two weekends ago. Um, and so have shown even tonight a lot of skill are making a lot of mistakes and so i think that might come back and punish them this orlando pirates side is a team that loves clamping down on even the smallest mistake orlando pirates on the other hand not known for making that many mistakes and so consistency is going to be their key they don't make that many saves because they don't have to they love to get to the other side of the field they love to clamp down on their opponents and never let it up and if you can't clear that ball out well you're going to be in for a bad time <laughs> Okay, no, a pretty a pretty good breakdown of what we should be coming through to expect. Greybeard, from your side, I mean, we, we spoke a little bit about this off camera, that previous series that we saw with Red Crown. What, we, what do you believe is going to be the winning condition for them going up against a team like Orlando Pirates? What do you think they need to immediately just clamp down, lock it down mm. to bring in a winning series? Um, I think just the, the way they have played, just do that better. You know, they were... <laughs> You know they 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 had their moments against against Apex, um, but if they the tighter they get with their own game, I think they get, they might catch an Orlando Pirates like who I don't think have completely gelled with each other yet. They're winning all their games, they're doing what they're expected to do, but they're having to work a lot harder than I think they believe they should. So there is an opportunity if 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 uh, Red Crown can find another. 5% and maybe catch OP down 5 or 10% to, to create a massive upset. All righty. Okay. Well, I mean, jumping into the outfit changes, Altruism, I'm going to start you off with your <laughs> prediction for this next series. What do you think? Give me numbers. Give me, give me the ideas that you're going to be uh, seeing here. Red Gun, if they can get themselves games where they don't make lots of mistakes and they can get through a couple of passes together, are going to be able to pick up, I think, a maximum of one game. 
That's that's my my very Ooh. ambitious. I love the Orlando Pirates side, and I am going to back them on this one. I think it's going to be a three-one at best okay. for Red Crown. Altruism to hashtag OP, easy enough. And of course, Graveyard, you need it. <laughs> Well, you know what? I'm I'm, I'm going to go the other way for this reason. There we go. Uh, Red Red Crown have taken a game from May Contain Nuts, and I think with that they might they have the potential to create an upset. And secondly, we need an upset. We mm. need some craziness here on the Swiss night. So I'm going to back Red Crown to take this one. Absolutely. You know what? I I will just back both of you your respective predictions. <laughs> I don't need to balance it out anymore. So I'm not going to add into the pile absolutely want to see a, a very close series from these two teams and see hopefully a little bit of that upset potential i mean mm. we, we, we jumped into you know the fall open last weekend we were coming back now with these teams they've had that opportunity to do a few adjustments but of course they need to bring that action we need to see actually that resurgence and hopefully a, a little bit of reworking coming through mm. from these teams to really fix those small mistakes right this is the best stage to do it you're up against the best in the ssa region so now they need to showcase it Moving on into mm. this next match, however, oh, the startup. I think that starting game is going to be setting the tone for the rest. Mm. How are you feeling, Graveyard? Are you are you ready to jump into this caster seat once again? Oh, of course I am. I'm, I'm I'm always keen to be casting anybody in SSA. But I, this, I just hope it's. It is so potentially ultras and mouth watering. I mean, this this could go the full distance, the game five deciding thriller, and I'd love to see that. Although, having said that, I wouldn't mind either seeing Orlando Pirates stamp some authority because they are clearly second place, but making it hard. <laughs> no, absolutely. You know, that's the thing is, as, as much as I give the a, a little bit of uh, impetus towards maybe unfair impetus towards the Lando Pirates. Red Crown, if there is a team that is really fighting for that second spot, I think Red Crown could be that team. No, I mean, based on what we've, we've seen in, in the previous match, it, it definitely looked like they picked up that slack. They definitely picked up that pacing. They looked pretty calm and composed. I mean, you know, Graveyard, you mentioned into those last final moments, you can't just be throwing the kitchen sink into everything. You need to keep yourself composed. You need to keep yourself in, in the back of your mind that, listen, there is still time to make a change. There is still time to bring something in. But of course, that's enough talking from me. I'm going to hand it over <laughs> to your fantastic, fantastic casters, and they're going to be bringing you all the action for this wonderful series coming up. All right, so Ultrasm, here we are, you and I, casting some high, high level action here again. And I cannot wait. And because this is one of the very rare times that we've sort of gone in opposite directions in terms of a prediction. I realize mine's a little bit crazy, but away they go. And let's see how it pans out. I mean, crazy is what we're expecting this series to be, right? The, the things that these teams are going to have to pull off to be able to eke out a bit of a lead against their opponents. We're expecting to see ridiculous things. We've seen cams going for demos that open things up where there shouldn't be a chance before. And like I said, as much as I love just the, the lineage that Orlando Pirates has brought in, the fact that this Red Crown team has always been a dark horse means that I'm, I'm excited. And they're off to a good start so far, putting some pressure onto the Orlando Pirates back line. Yeah, and, and, and you know, the, the, the inclusion of Eli into Orlando Pirates has been wonderful. And and I think it's going to take them just a little bit of a, a while. I mean, Eli's replacing to die for, to die for the big prodigy of the region. So he's got big shoes to fill. I think he absolutely deserves the opportunity. But it may just take a, you know, a regional or two or three to kind of get things going and, and to find their dominance. But at the same time, a very clearly hungry red crown team want to cause chaos in that top two. Oh, of course, you know, everyone is fighting it out. Wildcard, we only have two slots. So that sl seeming to be so well held so far by May Contain Nuts. Everyone wants that second slot. Uh, Sweaty Clarence trying for a fight here in the top, but uh, neither team really poking and prodding too hard at their goals. I have to say, Orlando Pirates seems to be on the deficit of the pressure now. Although, Eli, uh, heading it toward the net, it is cleared away. But yeah, they're, they're not storming out. I mean, we saw that this is the old Bravado roster. They were very good at kind of pace and dominance early on. And I think it's a case of them, A, getting used to their, used to, the, to each other as a team. But also, there is a rising skill level within the region. Oh, 100%. You know, every time you want to step up, it's because every other team is also looking for that. We've said that that midfield is looking so dangerous. 
because everyone is fighting so hard. Since the introduction of RLCS, it has been nothing but passion from everyone players. And you can see it starting now. Shot into the top right hand corner. Happy Meal manages to deflect it just there. But a good start so far coming out here from Red Crown. They're still hanging around this orange goal line. I like him now looking with his mechanical skills to push down to the other side of the field. Hands it off towards Happy Meal. The pressure starts. There comes our demo from Cams. We've said that, that he is one known for that. Really nice cooks here, Pinch, to send it down to the other side. Very good composure, though, from um, Eliakim to hold that off and turn it back, back and forth. This is clashing. Yeah, this is uh, this is good for Red Crown. You know, uh, Orlando Pirates, absolutely the favorites here. But the longer they can be held out, that they can be shut out from scoring, the better the better it's going to be for the confidence of Red Crown. And I think already their confidence is massive. Cam's off the backboard, down, looking for a pass. Eli, finally, we have some pressure here from Orlando Pirates. And it is Red Crown struggling to get the clear. Happy Meal looking for the pass. Cam's there to pick up the loose ball. Much better here from Orlando Pirates. This now, Zero has to get get this touch he misses it but ram will tidy up and for the first time in a long time we're seeing we're seeing red crown looking a little bit nervy up against their goal line <laughs> oh you know and, and somehow they still managed to hold it out a minute 30 left on the clock and neither team managing to to unduly test their opponents but also not looking comfortable on their side it's up to Orlando Pirates to take another roll forwards and they manage to get it the pass comes off the backboard cams waiting there just sitting such a nice play from Elia Kim to win it out in the 50 50 and the angle from cams even managing to get it past the last defender yeah, and you sort of get the feeling now, Orlando Pirates settling into their rhythm. Maybe taking a while just to get the understand what Red Crown are about. I'm sure they've scrimmed each other. They certainly know the know each other as players. But what are they bringing to the party? And maybe now they've figured it out. But we're going to see Red Crown pushing as hard as possible. Ram is going to get a ball round. Eli misses. Oh, dear. And there was a bump. And now there's been a demo. Zero puts his shot wide. Happy Meal's got a clear run at goal. If he can get it over, what an, an, a monstrous flick. Eli can't find the rebound. But the pressure's still on. The shot's still on. Oh, you felt they should have put that away. They had a golden opportunity. Just couldn't quite find the finish. Yeah, both teams at this stage. We saw Zero just putting it wide. And this time, Orlando Pirates, the ones not being able to lock it onto targets. There, both teams would love to have taken that, considering there's 40 seconds left. And it's just a single goal deficit. Now, Red Crown building up an attack. Gives it away. Happy Meal decides to go up the side. Loses control of it, though. And Ram puts the pressure back the other way. 30 seconds left on the board here for Red Crown to try and close this out and take us to an overtime. All right, 20 seconds to go. It's a one goal game, or is it? No, Ram's gonna get that. Uh, and you know, this is really, really close. But you know, Alt, we've spoken a lot about not reading too much into a one game performance. The net's open, but Eli doesn't have the momentum to catch up to the ball. Last effort here for Red Crown to send this to overtime. If they can get it past Orlando, looking to lock it down over on the blue side, take game one, which they do. It was a tight game, a one goal game, but it is a the first game that Red Crown lose in the Swiss series, the Swiss round of games this Friday night. Hey, someone had to lose a game eventually, right? And these that's why we have these two teams, both of them looking to qualify here and now. And it is going to be Orlando Pirates taking that first game. Uh, we do normally say that Orlando Pirates looks the weakest in their first game, takes a little bit of time to warm up. But yeah, maybe that's why they scored just a single goal. I think they would have wanted another one, but definitely mm. not looking comfortable in their defense either. Red Crown testing them more than a couple of times. Yeah, and I think there's going to be a bit of disappointment disappointment on the side of Red Crown because that game was absolutely winnable for them. We saw a couple of very tight opportunities that they could have jumped on, could have taken, and against Apex, they punished every mistake. Although... To be fair, Apex were making were making bigger mistakes than Orlando Pirates were here. But Red Crown still, they must believe that they can take this team. That wasn't very far off.
Yeah, just a single goal in it. And considering Red Crown had the, the, the elephant share, shall we say, of shots, they eight shots for them against the three shots of Orlando Pirates. The pressure from the first moment was there from Red Crown. They just weren't able to clinch it out there. And I mean, even that one shot there that Happy Meal had to deflect out of the corner was an incredible opportunity. A little bit more pace, a little bit more awareness, getting themselves together, being aware of something like Cam's demos, or in this case, Happy Meal's demos as we jump into game number two. And this team could definitely take it. All right, Orlando Pirates looking for some early pressure, but it's going to be return zero. Not quite sure what's happening. I think his shot might have been blocked away. And now Eli coming off the wall, looking to drop it down for a pass. Zero reads it, sees it, gets it cleared. But they are still under pressure from early pressure from Orlando Pirates. And this is better from their perspective, trying to keep the ball and for, succeeding for the most part, keeping it open the red crown side. I do like the uh, aggression, shall we say, coming out there from Ram, trying to live up to his name, wanting to turn around some bloodshed the other way, just mirroring his opponents back towards it. Oh, this has dropped down towards Sweaty Clarence, who doesn't manage to turn it towards the center. Still good awareness here from Red Crown to hang up on their opponent's goals, look to make some sort of opportunities come out. Ram now without boost, having to turn around. Happy Meal gets a flick, not a great one though, and leaves it to Ram to be able to clean up. All right, the ball for the most part sort of hanging out in the midfield for the time being. And for all the pressure from OP, they still haven't scored it. And it's starting Ooh. to have a familiar hue to the last. Eli doesn't get the rebound. Does he get the double? He does. Fantastic work for the finish there. I thought he had made a hash of it there by putting the ball high. But I think ultimately very planned, very calculated, exceptionally finished. Yeah, that started with Cam's being able to carry it nearly the entire length of the field. Ram got up to that and managed to pop it towards the side and still hung, hanging around, waiting on that wall for the next shot to come in. And you thought that shot was going to come in quickly. And I think that's why Eliakim decided to hold it out. This time, though, no hesitation, just aggression, as is the Happy Meal way. Comes again off Eliakim's really good 50. And Ram once more has to be the defender who has to watch this goal go in. Orlando Pirates stepping up the pace, no doubts. Absolutely. In the Battle of the Phoenix, Happy Meal making his the fattest to make sure he got that dunk into the net. Is this goal number three? Down off the crossbar. And Red Crown looking very fragile. The shot from Happy Meal going wide. But the pressure still very firmly being pushed, being applied by Orlando Pirates with their two-goal lead. And now most certainly looking like they're setting into a rhythm. Right. So this this is where now their awareness from this Red Crown side comes up. You're going against the toughest opponent of the weekend, without a doubt. And that's a nice passing play. Zero trying for the shot there. His shots haven't been on the market with that pinpoint precision that he may need to beat this Orlando Pirates side. But certainly with the gumption to take the shot there. Happy Meal now chips it up really nice and high. Like him decides not to go for it. Instead, let's Ram have to do some work there. Cam's now trying to create something out of nothing. Pops it up high in the midfield. Happy Meal's the first one up to it. Pops it very aggressively off the corner. I like him too high for him to reach, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. And it means Cam's, Cam's makes a mistake. Oh, dearie me. And a half the game to goal go. It's now a one goal game. And the work here from Ram, though, was brilliant. First, winning that 50 and following it in the air and popping it over Cams. But yeah, Cams would have been disappointed. He wanted, he should have been far quicker to the ball, could have been, and got the clear. Yeah, I must admit, I didn't even realize that was the second touch there from Ram. Just really good ability to hold that aerial a little bit longer and get the extra touch. Cams hesitates there, doesn't go for the 50. I don't know if he didn't know if his teammates were there behind him but certainly would have loved to be a little bit more aggressive into this. Maybe looking to make up for mistakes. He tries to muscle it through. Oh. At least turns into a pass. I like him denied by the woodwork. And Ram going to be there to clear it out. Happy Meal making the good decision to not commit too hard. And a good clear out from zero that turns down to the other way. We've got a one goal game. Yeah, and with so much time on the board and Red Crown, I've got to feel, okay, we're right back in this, boys. Let's just make it happen. But here we go. Happy Meal, does he get the... Ooh, slows it down a little. Um, and I'm not sure if he was sort of indecisive about which way he wanted to go, but it gave Ram the opportunity to get oh. the ball clear. Happy Meal finds it, though, in the end. The pressure pays off. Mm. And Orlando, and I, this is as much a pressure play, but it is panicked defense play as well. Yeah, 
It almost felt like Happy Meal there slowed it down on purpose because he knew his teammates were coming up with him. I don't know if he knew how quickly they were behind him, but decided to slow it down, force out a little bit more resources out of the blue side, and then eventually clinches it at the end. The team is there, the pass is well read, well executed, and comes through so cleanly. Orlando Pirates pick up their two goal lead and they're looking for more. And more they may well get if they keep this going. And uh, the last game was very close. It was hard to it was hard to separate the two teams ultimately by one goal. But this has very clearly been an Orlando uh, Orlando Pirates game. Yeah, we say that normally Orlando Pirates takes their first game just to read out their opponents, get a, a gauge of their speed, figure out how much aggression their opponents are going to be throwing. Now they've realized that they can push back against this Red Crown lineup. The Red Crown side's not testing their goal lines from a distance. And so able to get themselves a little bit further forward, take control of that midfield, and then start clamping it in together. Really nice passes back and forth in the back, though. Nearly goes awry. Sweaty Clarence had the opportunity. Ram now going to try to set something up here. Sweaty Clarence is up. Ooh. He manages to take the shot. And like him, cuts it off at the end there. And Red Crown denied. Zero oh. still trying to force it out and does. You know, while you were while you were calling that play, I was almost disappointed the previous shot would, didn't go in because I was like, oh, I'd love to see a sweaty finish to this game. And then just three, four seconds later, Zero finds a way through. We're back to a one-goal game, and we are going to have a sweaty 30-second finish. Well, sweaty is the name of the game for Clarence for this side, and he set that whole thing up there beautifully to start it off, testing the goal lines and... Uh, I mean, this is what we want to see when it comes to the top level of Rocket League in the oh. region. Okay, a little bit of a loose ball there. Happy Meal again decided not to go for the head forward approach. Cam's now taking this one. But at this top level, it's not about that first shot. It's about the fourth shot, the fifth shot. I said it mm. in the last round and it proved to be true over and over again. It's going to be up now to Red Crown. They've got three seconds left on the clock. They got it a long distance down the field. I think Orlando Pirates going to want to shut this down. They don't want to give it away. The pass towards the center, cut out. Zero was trying to make something happen. And, and it what, is Orlando Pirates. And what Pirates did so well for that 30-second sweat fest at the end was they pretty much dominated. They controlled that last 35 seconds or so. Um, in terms of territorial, they kept it over on the blue side and kept the ball away from Red Crown. They just couldn't find a way to uh, to find a to to build any kind of attack and and pressure the net. So Pirates, it's close in the end, but that was an Orlando Pirates game. Very much so, right? The entire goal or shot deficit between these two teams has flipped on its head. Now only five shots coming out from Red Crown. Still an admiral task to do against a good sound like Orlando Pirates. But when you're going up against 13 shots that Orlando Pirates managing to put on your backboard forces out eight saves from Red Crown. There's only so many saves you can mm. come in, no matter how good you are in the defense. When a team like Orlando Pirates just controls that space, gets those passes together, gets that backboard control that they really want, that is a team that is looking like they're starting to read the play and understand what their opponent's weaknesses are. All right. And what this means now, and, and we haven't touched on it yet, is the winner of this series is qualified for the quarterfinals. They will have no more work to do tonight. They can go and get an early night, get themselves ready for tomorrow. Um, and if and if Pirates do it, they'll be relieved. Last, last uh, regional, they were thwarted by having to come up against May Contain Nuts um, in, in, in this very matchup. So they've dodged that and they can retire early if they take it down. And they are on series point. Red Crown, if they are to pull off the upset, man, have they got a hill to climb to do it. Well, we've seen one reverse sweep here tonight already. WRG managing to pull that off in our first series. What a nice way to end this off for at least my uh, task here tonight uh, to be able to see a reverse sweep the other way. But I don't know. I, I don't know if I'd like to see that, being the Pirates fan that I am. I mean, completely impartial caster that I am. Uh, it would take, like you say, a mountain, though. A reverse sweep at any stage is very difficult to pull off. And against Orlando Pirates, who's just looked stronger in that second game and would like to keep that growth going, it's going to take a lot. And I think it starts with getting their shots on target and with pace. And they are trying to make things happen, but it has been... A, a, a confident Ooh. start, I think, from from Pirates. They've had had the best of it. A shot across net from zero nearly causes a bit of strife. I think uh, the the Pirates' defense was as surprised as the Red Crown attack, though they weren't able to take advantage. Now they've got some defensive work to do. Ram might have an opportunity. Gets the demo, but zero can't keep the pressure up. 
Sweaty has it from his own side. He's made a mistake. Passing to Happy Meal. Happy Meal to Cam Cam is denied. And the, the stakes, the pressure, the pace all picking up. I think you touched on it right there, is the fact that so far Red Crown have not been able to build up the same pressure. When the ball goes to that midfield, they kind of end up scrambling backwards to try and make something uh, happen. You know, they regathering themselves too many times. When they go forwards, there's not always that concise plan of what, the, what they're trying to attempt. Whereas when you come to a team like Orlando Pirates, when they go forwards, they know who they're looking for there. I like him hanging up so high there, decides to go out. Cam's coming out of the corner, cuts across there. And what an angle, what a redirect that is to send them to a one goal lead. Banger of a redirect and Orlando Pirates scored first every game. And once they score, they don't go behind. So uh, danger signs, warning times for Red Crown, but uh, they got plenty time to make the comeback. Oh. Cams, oh my word. Oh, but Eli with the follow. What happened? The entire Red Crown net was cleared of players, of defenders for the easy roll in. Oh, Clarence missing there. Everyone it was, it has a, had sort of dodged out of possession. Oh, two behind. Such a quick execution there from Orlando Pirates. That first shot trying to go in, zero went up for the contest, but two of their three players unable to make any sort of connection with the ball, leaves it there. Like him, gonna be happy, I think, fortuitous goal for him, but certainly at the end of the day, it doesn't count. Talking about fortuitous, Happy Meal gonna be very happy with this one. Chips it a long way up the field, decides to hang up for this, and I think it comes off zero at the end here. Either way, it bounced off that backboard and the Phoenix has risen. Orlando Pirates take a three-goal lead. Sure. And the game, uh, every game has started out very close. Has been, it has been re fairly even, let's say that way. Clarence, if he yeah. can get there, but he doesn't. But that first game was close the whole way through. Uh, the second was close for a bit and then Pirates ran away with it. This was close for what, a minute, a minute, <laughs> 20, minute, 30 but since then, Pirates, they just running away with it since scoring that opening goal. Although the long distance, whoa, can't get under the crossbar. But Pirates in charge, but still half a game to go. Oh, nice shot comes out from Ram there to test the long way around. Like him, doesn't get it too far out. Zero instead of the shot, decides to send it up high and just gives it away to Cams. And like you say, it kind of just seems like Red Crown at this stage trying to intercept, trying to disrupt the play. Whereas the control and the patience coming out from Orlando Pirates is palpable. This time, pushing up a little bit too far. The ball rolling, trickling towards the goal, but not enough pace. Sweaty Clarence going to come through and open up the scoring. Takes advantage of an overly pushed Orlando Pirates side. Eliakim tries to get it towards the side, but into the waiting arms and top corner sinks it home. And I wonder if that was a case of Pirates just trying to drive the nail in, kind of secure the win with a four goal. Yeah when they're like they were pushing quite hard there <clears throat> okay well you know what <laughs> okay. there we go we were pushing hard we conceded but let's just get it back off kickoff that is infuriating zero oh zero making a complete hash of his kickoff happy meal just had to make a connection and the connection he does three goal advantage restored that's that advantage of that fast kickoff, right? As if your opponent messes up even a little bit, you get to the ball half a second before them. No one there to get involved. Sails over Ram's head. And two minutes left on the board. You said that this that Orlando Pirates was looking to put the nail in the coffin. How many goals do you think Orlando Pirates wants before they feel that they've got this game completely sorted at this stage? I mean, they've got to feel pretty solid now. A minute and 40 left with a three-goal lead. But I think they would, a minimum, one more. One more, and then I think they'll just cruise. Look to look to keep possession, keep the ball away, make uh, make Red Crown chase the game. Mm. Uh, but for the... Or, or they just want to make a statement here. And, you know, a, a, a three a three nothing, a clean sweep of Red Crown, the dark horse, the danger team, would be a very good statement. Say, so, you know what, you guys have done well. But you're not ready for the big time yet. Oh, it was such a sneaky play. Almost works. Oh, that was that was classic. Getting that flip reset in midair, nearly curving it in under the defenders. The Orlando Pirates already look comfortable, as you say. They got a minute left. They got three goals in their back pockets that they're just holding on to right now. And now it seems to be. Let's see what it what we can get away with against these good teams. Because, like you say, the statement <clears throat> is important for them. Mm. They want to know what their oppositions look like and what they can use time and time again to get past this sort of opposition. 
Yeah, and, 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 and what a great result. I mean, you, you said uh, they, they would take one game, uh, a maximum of one game. They are going to get another goal here. Oh, listen, uh, they, they couldn't okay. get one goal in 30 seconds last game. You think I can get two? They need a kickoff goal. This next kickoff is really important for them. Yeah, 100%. This is what um, Red Crown has been showing their, their biggest strength so far, is the quick execution of goals. They haven't been able to build off pressure. So if they can do two quick goals, they could actually have oh, it. Oh. And that's it. Oh my goodness, Sweaty Clarence off the kickoff, like you say, manages to pick it up and brings it to a one goal game. It only took four seconds. So they still got nearly half a minute left in the back. Oh man, I'm Orlando <laughs> Pirates undone. They're going to be frustrated with that. But what a what a smashing kickoff from Ram to win it. And then Clarence reading the play, getting it in. Can they do it again? Can we go to overtime? It is red. Oh, Cams, Cams. No, Clarence gets in the way of that. And it's the last 15 seconds. We were where we were a game ago. It is Red Crown trying to find a goal in the dying seconds. They at least have possession for the time being. But this is it for Pirates to go through 3 nothing to the quarterfinals. Oh, that aerial control from Cams at the beginning took away half their time. And now they're scrambling. They're going to need it. They don't have very wide positioning. It's a bit of a double commit here from Orlando Pirates. So the chance is there, but dispossessed at the end with aggression. Orlando Pirates pick up three games in a row, three series in a row, and have now qualified for our championship playoff. The bracket is there. Red Crown disappointed that they couldn't pick up a single game. They some close ones mixed in there. Well, it is Orlando Pirates with the half day, uh, putting in a half day of work. Um, Red Crown are going to have to play at least one more. Um, but, uh, you know... I, there are a number of teams, and, and I'm going to put Pirates there that are confusing me a little bit. A, a team like ATK, who sweep Reformed in Swiss and then get completely clapped and swept by Reformed the next day in the quarterfinals. Orlando Pirates now struggling. 3-2 against ATK, then coming up against Red Crown, who have shown themselves to be a dynamite team and making quick work of them. So there's a lot of sort of up and down results from all of this, which is... I mean, it's good for pirates, but a little confusing. <laughs> it's confusing at the end of the day, but it's who clinches it out at the mm. end there. They've got that ability, Orlando Pirates, to always rally. They always seem to have just that little bit more in the background. Once they figure figured out how to play against their opponents, they just seem to be able to dig more and more out and be able to put in the most creative shots that I do like to see. And that's why I'm wearing the shirt. It's just they're a team that constantly <laughs> impresses at this stage. And like you say, half day job but if you can get the job done in half a day why not take the afternoon off and go have a beer so well done to Orlando Pirates for qualifying um, and Red Crown let's not count them out I mean this wasn't a relegation game this was just to qualify in the shortest amount of time mm. they've done very well the rest of the night so far and there's a reason why the international org has picked them as the the spark of how to invest in sub Saharan mm. Africa because man they're still a good team Absolutely. And Ez, watching from the sidelines, didn't go... I mean, I think the result went the way it was expected, but not the manner. I certainly wasn't expecting a sweep. No, look, I, when we started off that first game, I mean, Altruism, you, you made the statement, it's a one-goal game, and then the next game was also a one-goal game, but it was a 2-3 uh, scoreline, so it wasn't quite what we were expecting. And then we continued mm. through with those, uh, those games coming through from Orlando Pirates. Really... Just looking like nothing phased them. It didn't matter what Red Crown were doing. They just came back and said, it's okay. You're just going to put this in the goal and uh, you, you try again. It's your turn. Basically giving them a challenge. Altruism for you, I mean, as you mentioned, one goal game, one goal game. We kept going through from, from match to match. But uh, Orlando Pirates, again, just so, so cool and calm mm. and collected. You know, especially when I look at that third game, the fact that they were 4-1 up, it ended up as a one-goal game, but it felt like Orlando Pirates, like Greg Beard said, just felt comfortable. They just took their pace off, and they didn't need to work any harder. They could have. Uh, and that's what makes me love the team so much, is that they can work harder. So, yeah, one-goal games at this stage was all that they needed to do. Um, and maybe maybe Red Crown taking it a little bit further than Orlando Pirates would be comfortable with at the end, but still 3-0. <laughs> 
I mean, Greybeard, for me, they, it, it, it just felt like Eli was the constant thorn in Red Crown's side. I mean, just when they thought they had saved it, just when they thought they were in the clear, Eli comes through out of the shadows mm. almost, it seems like, and grabs that goal and puts it in the net. What do you think allowed Eli just to, to finally have such beautiful timing and what gave them that opening to, to do that? Why was Red Crown almost giving him that space in their defense to make that happen? I think simply, it, it, for me, it was a case of Orlando growing into that series. Um, at the very beginning, uh, I, I sort of put them, there was the question around how much they've gelled as a team. And um, and, and that was, that was I think, a valid question in that game one, because they, it was a very close game. There was just a single goal in it. But coming out from game two, they they got better and better. And I think it was just a case of them, whatever their game plan was, whatever they discussed, they've been discussing in the week leading up to this and, and today leading up to this, I think they finally just started to execute. And Eli, the boost hungry player, the, the mechanical player, very capable of scoring. They're almost like, okay, let's, let's make sure we enable that. And Daisy, I beg your pardon, Cam's, his role is, is so often overlooked, but you know, doing that job, in defense and, and and facilitating plays. The one goal coming on the back of his cross-field uh, 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 air dribble. Um, and then Happy Meal, just the solid tactician of the team. And, and I think it just finally worked out for them. Cohesion being the theme here for Orlando mm. Pirates and ultimately bringing in such a beautiful, beautiful set of series. And Ultraism, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to ask you the question here, comparing Orlando Pirates to Red Crown. As we know, for, for Orlando Pirates, it means that they've uh, qualified, but it's just the Swiss series. We know there's still mm -hmm. a few more games for Red Crown to bring in. What do you think, based on, on that match, based on that series, Red Crown can take away from that and hopefully implement that into their next games? What Red Crown was doing very well in their previous series was they took control of the game. And I think that's something that's got to be a priority right now, is they've got to play their own game. Orlando Pirates, if you give them the space to dictate the tempo, you are going to be pushed behind. It seemed like Red Crown was always trying to intercept the ball. It was they were trying to kind of just get a touch on it to stop Orlando Pirates doing something. I would have liked to have seen those touches just escalate to more than mm. just the touch. It should have been the touch into a pass. They, they were kind of left open in the mm. midfield where there was no one there to follow up the intercept, the 50-50, you know? Just something in their mentality was not aggressive enough. And yeah, you've got to be worried about being too aggressive against a very good team that's going to punish you if you overextend. But a little bit more impetus keeps the possession in your hands, keeps you going towards your opponents, builds that pressure up, and then starts to get the goals that are coming from it. So what I'm taking from that is uh, fantastic setups from them, fantastic opportunities that they are lining up and they are getting themselves to that point. But it's just those final moments of execution, those final hits, those final, you know, the, the coordination in those final moments that need to come through from Red Brown. And maybe they could be seeing themselves finishing off those goals at the end of the day. And Greybeard, last few thoughts here for you. I mean, as we take a look at it, of course, uh, I mean, Orlando Pilots, they, they did what they do best, right? They brought through the absolute cracker of a game. Moving in as one of the first teams now qualified. How, how do you really think that we're going to be seeing still that upset when Red Crown potentially come back next time? Do you think they have that opportunity to take it next time? Well, you, all this has told me is is what I was looking for is is there a crack in that second spot uh, position that Orlando for Pirates firmly hold at the moment? And the immediate answer is no. Uh, Red no. Crown <laughs> potentially there, but they're not there yet. Um, and the same with reform, we're going to see from them later. Can they start to wedge a crack in the top one or two position? We'll get an answer to that, that question a little bit later. So that's what I'm taking for it. Red Crown, a very potential serious threat, but not there yet for those to challenge for those top two slots. Hey, the, the great thing about RLCS is it highlights the new talent, it highlights the teams that had to fight their way through the qualifiers to get them to the stage. And of course, improvement is the name of the game. It's the only way that the scene is going to grow and get better. But of course, for us, we're going to be taking a short break, going to a quick Ez, before you before you oh, yeah. go to the break, because you were talking Something. about new talent. I just, I just wanted to say, in terms of new talent, I'm thrilled that you are here hosting. Uh, new to the RL, RLCS scene, thank you for being here. It's fabulous. And Triple M, who did a magnificent job of his casting. So so on, on the talent desk, to our new talent, welcome. We're thrilled to have you. And one more thing. Uh, Greybeard, you just said, uh, no, no, 100%. Welcome, ears. Uh, that's a fantastic addition. No doubt about that. But you asked if there's a chink in that top three, in that top yeah. two. Yeah, mm. we do actually have a result. Oh, oh no! Oh yes, Ooh. formed versus may contain nuts. 
What? Was a three one to reform. What? What? Okay. Um. Oh my God! Uh, Why didn't we show that match? Oh my word! Uh, oh my uh, word! Shocker! <laughs> Unbelievable! Wow! Okay, what a result. Hmm. Yeah, look, uh, I was prepared for Orlando Pirates uh, and Red Crown. I was not prepared for that kind of conversation. So uh, we probably might have to take that off camera while I regain my composure <laughs> and understand that in the first... Really? Did you read it wrong? Are you... Are you I sure? refreshed the page twice just to make sure about <laughs> that. That is an intense... And that is going to be a lot of breakdown that we're going to have to see. That opens up SSA completely. I feel like I, I need to to get glasses and go take a look at yeah. that one so yeah we're gonna go to a break we're gonna we're gonna try and delve into that and hopefully we'll have a few comments for you when we get back but yeah don't don't, don't go away clearly there's a lot more action waiting for you when we get back
Welcome back to RLCS. It is the full cup. And of course, we've seen quite a few interesting uh, turn of events today. Just before we went to the break, we got the confirmation, of course, uh, with regards to MCN versus Reform. That that did, in fact, finish in a 3-1. So uh, with that, we know our first two qualified teams. It is going to be Reformed and Orlando Pirates heading through into the playoffs. So a lot of surprises coming through today. And it wasn't the surprises we were expecting. Of course, I am your Sparks. I'll be your host for the rest of the day. But I am joined by the ones and the only. So because of is Triple M and Morky Mork joining us on the cast. Welcome, guys. Triple, you've already had a fantastic day of casting. We saw it. We loved it. But now Mork. You're going to be joining us. How are you doing? How are you feeling? Ready for the action? Well, I'm feeling pretty happy. Uh, Lukapedia has been in South Africa now, so uh, let's go. That that's pretty class. That's the goal. That's a good start to the day. Um, but no, I'm really excited. You know, I've always said that I say, you know, as small as major, biggest hype, and it's an absolute pleasure to be here, joining back again, and you know, be part of this. And it was a pleasure when I saw the message from Greybeard earlier on, me like, you do it. I was like, absolutely, no bother. Um, absolutely love to see him. So, very happy to be here and happy to be getting into a, a good game, you know, elimination game. So, it's even more interesting. Absolutely. I mean, heading into this next series, it, it's definitely going to be an interesting one. Triple M, I mean, give us the breakdown. Moving on into this this next series, giving a little bit of love to, you know, the Reunion Islands, of course. How are you feeling about this matchup? Yeah, pretty excited. It's not uh, two teams that you get to see that often on the main broadcast. And obviously, two things these two teams have in common is one, they're both from Reunion Island. And two, they both beat Espionage despite having a difficult evening. So uh, it will be interesting to see who can come out on top. Two teams that I think uh, are in, still in the mix despite not being the favorites and not really getting any, any love from the predictions. So yeah, it's a battle of two underdogs. I'm excited. Oh, it's going to be an absolute, a beautiful, beautiful series, I'm expecting. Um, and hopefully a few more surprises. I mean, we've already, we've had some absolute bangers today. We've had some few things that have just gone the way that we expected to. But definitely this weekend is looking like the teams have definitely hit the bots. They've hit to, you know, the, the fields. They've practiced whatever they needed to to bring in as such a surprising performance coming into this one. Of course, you can see that Swiss bracket on your screens right now. Um, and what we're heading into is, oh, it is going to be a beautiful one there between Sun, Moon and LMR. But of course, we have to talk a little bit about the upcoming bracket. Take a look, look into a deeper delve there between Sun, Moon and LMR and just take a look at the stats. As we know, it has been a bit of an interesting one so far. I mean, looking at the, the, the scores that we've seen today alone, you know, we mentioned a little bit of Team Espionage or Camera. They, they're actually being disqualified now, which is a surprise to, to say the, the least, I would say. more from your side, I mean, you, you've heard a little bit of the, the surprises we've had. What are your, your thoughts so far? Yeah, I think espionage going out early is, is a really big shock. Uh, Mega Tain Nuts losing is also a big shock, but it is Swiss. And you know, I mean, sometimes having a loss in Swiss could be a really good thing. We saw teams like Endpoint last season go 3 and 1 there, Swiss, and go on to win the regional. So, you know, it's not over yet. You know, they might have a harder game technically in the next round if they don't do well. But espionage going out already is, is pretty crazy. Well, these two teams as well, SM and Elmore, Elmore L, oof, that's, that's a mouthful, uh, is going gonna, is gonna to have a chance here to clinch their place in the playoff in the invitational so you know getting that round five is huge getting those extra points on the board is huge giving us the biggest chance to make those invitationals is huge and of course for some of these teams today it's the last chance to go to play rlcs for over 80 days so you know it's it's it's, it's a big game here big game absolutely and then obviously after that we're going to know who's unfortunately going to be joining team espionage we're going to be knowing how this, at least how some of the series has been going so far. Swiss, as we know, has been absolutely chaotic. Mork, you absolutely love it. Our production team are grinding their teeth whenever they think about Swiss, but it's okay. We enjoy the action. I mean, Triple, Mo Triple M, from, from your side, how what are some of the other teams that you've been keeping an eye out as we've been going through? Obviously, we can't really cover all of the teams, but who are some of the ones that you've been keeping an eye out as we've been going through the series? I've been keeping an eye on Unity. I think they've done really well this evening. I've also been keeping an eye on Bro, uh, two teams that you know I kind of have a soft spot for, and uh, they've delivered tonight. So it's interesting to see how they've progressed. Team Espionage, unfortunately, also a team that you know I, I have close ties to because of Oli. Unfortunately, it's just not their day today, and uh, I'm really disappointed to see them go out as early as they did. So it's been quite a, a rocky and turbulent day in terms of the narratives that that we've seen play out this evening. And, uh, you know, I'm, I'm just excited to see what happens next. I mean, even if you take a look at the, the games that Espionage were playing, you know, they, they were they were fairly close in terms of just the, the overall points. Uh, I mean, 2-3 there to RMLR. Yeah, that one's going to catch me. Mork, I'm with you there. That one, that one is going to catch all of us. But 
as we take a look at the rest of the games again a very close uh, succession there between sun moon as well also another two three so it looks like they they've been just so so close and just those final moments once again just catching them and not quite making that you know that that push into the, the next phase but it, it happens. Swiss is always crazy, and uh, we do have to see a little bit of that competition. I mean, I, I heard you mentioning that we've had that that middle grounding Triple M being so close. We've had those middle teams really fighting it out, really keeping us on the edge of our seats. And now we've even had some of those middle grounding teams taking a slot at uh, MCN and taking quite a bit a big hit at MCN. So again, just goes to show the, the competition in the scene. It, it's growing and it, it's thriving by the looks of it. Yeah, I mean, you even have a team like Apex sitting in the middle because they've been underperforming. But as a result of that, they've they've been pushed into the middle of the pack to make it stronger, make it more competitive. And even though most people are not a fan of Swiss, I think one thing Swiss does really well is it does shake things up, doesn't it? It creates a bit of chaos, which you like from a perspective of the spectator. You know, obviously us, a lot of us, myself included, don't really like it from a competitive standpoint. But I think from a viewing point of view and an entertainment factor point of view, it does make things very interesting. Thing. And so I think that middle of the pack is definitely something we've, we've spoken about a lot and will continue to speak about throughout this weekend. Oh, absolutely. I mean, some of the upcoming matches that we're going to be taking, well, that we don't get to take a look at, but that will be happening off stream, will be the likes of Make and Say Nuts going up against ATK. We've got Red Crown going up against the Bros. We've got White Rabbit going up against Apex. Astronic and Arian, they're going to be hitting it off. And of course, Lupo and Unity will be uh, hitting things off. So Triple M will obviously be keeping an eye out on that one on the side to see how that one's going to finish off. But Mork, for your side, I mean, as you, you've taken a look at a little bit of that SSA action, you know, some of the games that we've had today, what are some of the defining features of this region, you know, as you would compare them to some other regions? I, I said this on a team stream a few weeks ago, is that I cast the very first regional that I, I, I ever had. I was lucky enough to cast an amazing semi-final. And the level of gameplay has gone up so much in that time. It's been absolutely insane to watch. It's been incredible to watch. It's exactly what you want to see from a region that's developing. And it is a developing region. It's a region that deserves, you know, more spotlight put on it. It deserves more opportunities to grow and obviously you know there's only two wildcard spots so ultimately every single point matters ultimately and every single reputation matters one thing i've noticed definitely is they've got faster they use the demos more they're using you know really good tactical infield passes better you know it's, it's a combination of all these things that they've learned from international scrims with the likes of g2 with the likes of endpoint with the likes of um you know bds so it's really really good to see Absolutely. We love that that revamp that's coming through into the scene. Again, that, that's the beauty of Swiss formats as well, as it pits you against, you know, some of the best. If you come through the lower seed, well, you're gonna give into a surprise. You're gonna be getting having that chance to go up into the best seed and really pinning yourself against, seeing where you may lack, seeing how you can improve. And that ultimately is gonna lead us into even better skill sets coming through into the region. But of course, as we know, the next series is gonna be Sun Moon and LMRL. I am going to have to think about that one. But of course, for the rest of the viewers, if you're watching, you can let us know what your predictions are, who you think are going to be taking the next series. You can use the hashtag LMRL. This is going to be so difficult. And Sun Moon, which is just SM. They make it easy for me. You can let us know in the chat who you think are going to be winning. But of course, I need to ask our casters, you know, because uh, Ultraism thought that uh, May Contain Nuts were not going to be dropping a single map today. So you, you, you really can't take it worse than he did. So Triple M, going to start with you. SM or LMRL? Yeah, for me, it's it's got to be SM. And simply because I know more about the roster and, and I've, they're a roster that I've been quite excited to watch, you know, especially, you know, on this scale, considering how big this event is. Uh, no disrespect, obviously, to the other team, right? Like LMR are a good team in their own right. They deserve to be here as, as evidenced by the series earlier on, but it hasn't been the best day for either team. So I think for both teams, this is now an opportunity for them to play against an opposition of similar skill level. It's a good chance for them to actually, you know, show what they're worth. But I'm going to give it to Sun Moon. All righty. So we've, we've already got the first one for Sun Moon. Mork, are you going to follow suits or are you going to go a, a little bit of a different path there? I'd love to say I'm going to go a different path, but I'm not. I'm going to say Sun Moon as well. I just think that they're a more consistent team. They're slightly better mechanically. They look more consistent. They, they've got a great coach as well, of course. He was, he was uh, famously being a caster and statistician for this uh, region before. Um, and Joda is a fantastic coach, and she's going to get the best out of them. So I think just because they have a better coach, because they're just slightly more better in chemistry and mechanics, I think you have to give this under. All right. Well, then, uh, as the host, I have to come in and I have to say no. 
not Sun Moon, we're going to go with LMR Legends as they're going to be going through into their matchup. But it's going to be ultimately coming down to who's going to be the better team, who's going to keep their composure, and who's going to be putting, you know, forward their, their best wheel, not their best foot, but their best wheel, and bringing in the scores in the games. Ultimately, this matchup, I think, is, is going to be an interesting one. As we mentioned, you know, Sun Moon were leaning a little bit more towards them in terms of their stats, in terms of, you know, their, their, their previous history. But more, what what would you say would be a winning condition for them? How can LMR start off this next series and really make sure that they're going to be taking it all the way to the end? I think consistency is always a big thing in Rocket League, right? If you can manage to bring that momentum from the last series, because of course, they've, they're coming off a win which is huge for them. Their opponents have come off a loss. So they're going to have that momentum on their side. So they're going to look a little bit better, a little bit more fresh. But they have to come in and use those demos and bumps, that physical play to really disrupt the Sun Moon team, really make them think about what they're doing, second guess every single movement. And if you can do that, you give yourself a great chance of winning the series, especially when you're not the team's better to win. You put yourself in a really good position to win that series and put yourself in a really good position to win the whole thing. So hopefully they can come out and be very, very physical from the start. If they don't, I think Sun Moon's going to run right it over. Mm. Yeah, really make sure that they're not going to be giving Sun Moon that edge. As soon as they do give them that, just a little bit of an inch to take, they're going to be taking them for a mile. So it's going to be consistency and it's going to make sure that they're not going to allow any sort of cracks for Sun Moon to really take, you know, to capitalize off right from the start. Triple M, from your side, same question applies. I mean, if we, we take the, the picture to Sun Moon, what's going to be their winning condition moving into this next series? Listen, I think for Sun Moon, obviously you got to stick to the fundamentals, you got to play as a team, but I think what will give them the marginal edge is just their mechanical ability, right? Like in terms of raw skill, I think Dillawave is a fantastic player, Cyrex is a fantastic player, so they've got what it takes to win this game on individual quality. It's just about how they're able to play as a team, not take the opponent for granted, and uh, make sure that they cut out mistakes. We saw in the series that have passed earlier this evening that mistakes can cost you a lot at this level, and it's all about fine margins, so just iron out those mistakes, make sure the communication is clear, trust your teammates, and uh, mm. just play your game. I mean. Moving into Swiss, as we know, it, it, it is a lot of chaos. And I, I do think that, that that extra added layer of absolute chaos, the fact that you're constantly playing games, you're constantly playing against you know teams that may be a higher seed than you, that does add and compound to the stress that these teams might be taking. You know, it's almost like those first day jitters, but they, they, they're much worse. So for a team to now take that you know in their stride, regardless of that, and bring forth a, a fantastic performance, that is really something to show for. And uh, it's why we love to see RLCS. But of course, as you know, remember, Put those uh, those votes in chat. We'll be taking a look at the the predictions at some point or other, just so we can see you know who you're leaning towards, whether or not it's going to be uh, LMR or it's going to be SM. And it looks like it's a 60-40 split. So that that's that's fairly close there to Sun Moon. Still Sun Moon just edging out. So it's it's almost the same as my casters going against me with my predictions. It's okay. <laughs> it's about the same. We we're keeping it consistent here. But moving into the next series, well, it's going to be up to all LMR legends to obviously uh, prove both of us wrong. So I'm going to hand it over to our fantastic casters. It's Triple M and Morky Mork to bring you all the action for this next series. Thank you very much as we kick off here. Game number one of potential five, of course. Ball come across from AK looking to get that one down. But for me, from the start here, it's all about who's going to be more consistent, Triple M. I said that in the start. Who's going to have that better pressure? Who's going to really come off? fighting at the blocks because whoever comes at the block quicker is going to give us a really good chance of taking this first game yeah and, and rocket league is a game of fine margins it's a game of increments it's the small things that count when you have two evenly matched teams i just feel the mechanical ability here for sun moon will reign supreme as cyrex takes it forward Delawave now carrying it oh he goes for a bit of a fake and leaves it to cyrex who can't get anything from it and now it's an opportunity for LMR to take it the other way and they're putting on the pressure early on. It's still nil-nil with uh, just over four minutes to go. What do you think of the start so far? It's been nip and tuck so far. It's been feeling each other out the first minute or so. That's usually the case in any RLCS. It doesn't matter if it's SSA, it doesn't matter if it's EU, it doesn't matter if it's NA, it doesn't matter if it's uh, MENA. It's the first minute, it's all about feeling your opponents out, seeing what they're trying to do, figuring out a game plan that's gonna work to suit you. And that's I think what both teams are doing right now feeling each other out, just getting the ball to the awkward positions, making it difficult, trying to see how the reads are coming on defense, how the reads are coming in offense, how the pre-jumps and the pre-flips are coming through. And Cyrus is going to take this ball back instead, bring it up the field now and just, just, just carry it out. But he gets challenged nicely there in the midfield by Shadix and Shadow. Now he's going to wait here and uh, patiently as AK looking to get this one over. Does very well indeed. And can he find some attack going here for this LMO Legends side and able to do so so far. But it's been a good start from LMO Legends. 
Yeah, it's been a it's been a control start, poised start from both teams. Good pressure from LMR, and now it's going the other way. Sun Moon looking to make something happen and perhaps take the attacking initiative as Shadow wins the ball. A demo for good measure on Cyrix as well, and uh, it's uh, not looking too promising for Sun Moon here. The attack was thwarted quite quickly, although there might be a bit of trouble here, and Shadow is able to parry that one away. And I must say, this start, it's, it almost feels like a chess match, but Ake with the shot, and it's an open net. I think it's Shadow who had the initial shot, but Ake following it up and guiding it into an open net to make sure that uh, his team are one in the luck. What a mistake this is. What an own goal. He's trying to pass it back to his teammate. His teammate misses it entirely, and that gives the opportunity to fall into the back of the net. One nil now here. LMR Legends have the lead, and probably deservedly so for the first two minutes they've been. The more consistent team in terms of attack for a kickoff goal opportunity perhaps here that's well cleared away for now as Dillawave will take out AK who of course was the man who assisted that goal last time ball coming center but Andy is there looking to get this one up looking to get his by he's expecting a challenge that's a good fake challenge in the back wall but then not able to control it is his opponent unfortunately and LMR Legends here really starting well really taking the momentum from the last series and carrying it forward yeah, and I, and I must be honest, I thought that was a shot. I didn't think Karma was capable of such, but uh, I guess you take for granted that these guys are human after all, and even though they're so good at the game, they're capable of making the odd mistake here and there. Anyways, AD with the nice little pass. It's Ake now, and it's 2-0 to double the lead for uh, LMR. Yeah, lovely little pass here from Andy. Finds AK, knows he's in loads of space. AK just puts it center, a very smart shot. Takes it away, takes away the angle, makes it extremely difficult for the car to get across and makes it 2-0. And MO Legends here really on top now. And, well, Jonah's going to have a hard time here figuring out exactly what to do in this next game because right now MO Legends just looking a better team. They've had more shots, more opportunity, and they've had more pressure as well. Yeah, just aesthetically, they look like the better team. They, they've had the attacking initiative. They look more poised, more controlled. And despite that chess match in the first opening, you know, 60 seconds, it's now uh, a completely one-sided affair as uh, Andy looks to take it the other way. A dangerous ball in. Karma this time not making any mistakes and putting it away, taking it the other way. Dillawave now will continue the good work started by his teammate. And uh, now Sun Moon can look to build some sort of pressure, but it's Andy again. Uh, coming down and trying to intercept but uh it goes the other way a bit of back and forth at the moment yeah no real good looks yet for sun moon the leader on net that's a good fake from Dillaway, but ultimately he had three defenders to get by he can only get by one there and he will get the shot on target kind of and has to be cleared away by cyrex who will clear the ball for now but no real looks on net so far here for the team in blue and that's going to be concerning for them and for their coach of course can they fight a way back in this one? It's a bit messy right now. Everyone's just messing around a little bit in defense. No one willing to take a step up and really get the defense as Karma finally does get something going. But Sun Moon, they're toying with food. There's going to be toy with right now. Yeah, pretty dangerous place, but it's Ake again with a good goal and taking advantage of some sloppy defensive work. Karma here just not getting the best of touches, putting it directly into the path of the opposition. And that makes it 3-0 with the minute to go. Yeah, that should be game one, signed, sealed, and delivered right there. That dagger straight to the heart as the ball found its way into the back of the net. 3-0 now, and it's looking a bit dire here for Sun Moon. But of course, it is the best of five, so there is opportunities to fight back, and it should be 4-0. The side flip coming out at the wrong time there for, I believe it was AK. Couldn't quite manage to get it on target, and we continue on here. 35 seconds, can Sun Moon get something on the board, or at least a good look on net before this game ends? Yeah, well, listen, uh, I've, I've seen miracles in my time casting Rocket League, but this this is too much of a mountain for them to climb. So I think it is game, set, match. Although it's a goal at the other end from Cyrix and uh, perhaps looking to pick up some momentum and uh, get some pride back in these last 28 seconds. Yeah, that's an important goal. It gets you on the board. You never want to go a full game without scoring a goal at the start. You want to score a goal as early as you can, settle in, settle your nerves. So that goal could be huge and intentional this series, could be a real turning point for this series. And Sun Moon, well, looking for a cherry pick goal here, perhaps opportunity off the backboard. Good defense, oh, but well denied. Andy managing somehow to keep Syrix's shot out of the net. Ball can be across here, that's an awkward touch. Everyone missing the ball, everyone just messing about a little bit. It's a bit scrappy, it's 4-1 now. And it's a very, very scrappy game of Rocket League so far. Yeah, I mean, what started out as a poised Rocket League game and a really good battle between both teams in the middle of the park has turned into uh, chaos, complete chaos. And uh, unfortunately, 
for Sun Moon. They've got to go back to the drawing board because that goal pretty much sums up the match they've had. It's just been an absolute mess with six seconds to go now. And uh, this should be... Yep, that's game. GG's. Yeah, that's the, that's the first game in the bag. Animal Legends will take it by four goals to one. Of course, the own goal started out. And I think since the own goal went in, it was really difficult to find a way back in. Seven shots plays three, of course, and that's always going to be a big, big statistical thing in Rocket League. Four saves over Sun Moon. They have to really find a way of attack now, find a way into that offensive half and keep away from their defense. And that's going to be the struggle for them right now. And Joda's going to have a word here, you feel them, just have make them think about it, have have a word with them, just settle them down a little bit because that's really important now. The nerves are going to be getting to them a little bit. They're on stream. It's a difficult position to be in. And at the moment, it's LMR Legends who are signing up and looking the better team. Yeah, and, and as you rightly pointed out, I think that the shots, the disparity in shots between both teams is a good indicator that LMR are in the ascendancy. They dominated that game in every facet, defensively in the midfield and just going forward in the final third. What do you think they should improve, Sun Moon Esports? What, what would you change? What would you be saying to them if you were in that uh, that that Discord call right now? I've been looking for more passes because that's the one thing I've noticed is that it's been solo play rather than passing plays. The one goal they scored was a really nice passing play. It was really good, really good work there in, in terms of the play with what they were doing as we go to Aquadome for game number two. But, um, you know, definitely the passing plays, try and unlock that defense, try to put themselves in an awkward position, try and really make it so difficult for your opponents that they can't really fight back. I think that's a smart way to go about it. So passing plays, getting those pass the channels open, leaving it awkward for your opponents, that's the way to go about it. Yeah, I mean, and that comes down to chemistry at the end of the day. Obviously, execution is important, but we know this team is capable mechanically of executing those passes that you're talking about. It's just about the chemistry. It's just about trusting each other as a team. So as we go ahead into game number two in Aquadome, can Sun Moon find the chemistry that they need? We're about to find out as we get the kickoff underway and Shadow immediately putting some pressure. Uh, that one's not going to go towards the goal, but it is in a dangerous position for Sun Moon. And they've got to be careful here because we've seen a lot lot of early goals uh, shape the momentum of a series so far and Andy oh in typical fashion gets an early goal with only 13 seconds on the clock this is great from AK though it's all about AK's play there lovely air dribble carries out a pass two defenders off the backboard finds Andy and Andy slots it home one nil what a start here for Elmore Legends and well, it looks like we're going to be proved up by our host on, on, on the talent here. Because right now, Elmore Legends is not looking like they're going to drop this series. They look like they're going to from strength to strength in this one so far. And they're going to be a hell of a team. If they manage to get to round five, they're going to be a hell of a team to beat. Yeah, absolutely. I've been absolutely blown away by how strong they've started off so far. Although this could be a half chance for Dilla Wave. Karma now looking to follow it up. And it could go in. Oh, beautiful save by Shadow. And a great following touch by Andy. But unfortunately, it doesn't lead to a goal. They live to fight another day. And that could have easily been uh, one all. Third man, very aggressive there for uh, the team of Sun Moon, though. I'm not sure if I like that play or not. No, you're gonna, probably not going to win the ball. And still pushing up anyway like that. I don't know if I agree with it. I want to see better half rotations, some better play in terms of Sun Moon. You know, they can't be over committing when it's only one nil, it's only one goal, and still four minutes to go. You know, that's that's a play you make when you're two goals down with a minute left. It's not a play you make with a you know a minute four minutes left, you're only one goal down. No, absolutely. The intelligent approach is to just keep your composure and try gain control of the game. And it seems like they haven't really learned from the first game. Although I must say it is an indication that at least they're confident. You know, they're, they're, they're taking the game to the opposition rather than sitting back. So I, I guess that's a positive. And Karma now takes it up. Dilla Wave now follows it up. Uh, looked like they were setting up something special there, but no end product to follow up the great mechanical work and Dilla Wave now oh that's <gasps> a beautiful shot and unfortunately it's just over the crossbar whether that was intentional or not is beside the point Dilla Wave almost putting his team into back into the game with a special special shot yeah I think beforehand they were going for a pinch but it would have been a very very difficult pinch to execute camera bailed out of it as good 50 they're really important 50 if you lost that 50 he was in a lot of trouble really nice play pass with field now well denied. Here's an opportunity now, perhaps 1v1 on the backboard as Andy. He'll clear that one center, but there's Dillawave. And sure, he's going to roll that one in. He will indeed 1-1. One, one. And well, it's a defensive error, but you can't blame Dillawave. He read that all the way. Yeah, fantastic positioning by Dillawave to read that play all the way from his own half. And yeah, that's going to be the easiest goal he's probably going to get of the series, but he won't care. It's one all at Aquadome, and we go into another important kickoff here. 
and it's uh, about 50-50, but Shadow, ooh, all the way from downtown, oh, and a beautiful goal! Oh, the self-service, he's turned the Aquadome to an absolute buffet here. Oh my word. What a play here. He uses the, he uses the bumper of his car to knock that one into the back of the net, makes it 2-1. What a play as well. Very, very consistent on kickoff as well. Got the back boost, went up the wall, got possession, gave his team a chance, and the lead was back very, very quickly. Would you love to see if you're an LMO fan here? Ball off the backboard, but comes away. AK managing to clear his lines for now. He's looking to set something up an attack. He's been the most consistent player in this field for me so far, but Shadow's had a hell of a time as well. And this should be... Oh, he's missed an open net! Well, oh, <laughs> well. I've seen whoops in Rocket League, but that one is uh, is as bad as they come. And uh, that is the type of thing that I think will cost them or could cost them if they're not careful. Sun Moon have really got to iron out these small things. And unfortunately here, it seems like the momentum is really getting to their heads as a nice shot comes in. Dillawave does well, but the danger is not thwarted. And it's AK with a follow-up shot and the interplay, whether it was intentional or not, doesn't really matter. Oh, they're, they're, they're just absolutely brilliant. Yeah, that's that's definitely not intentional, but it works. It yeah. definitely works. Puts the top bins. No, no one's saving that shot. Lovely play there from AK. Actually, really smart play to make you realize the shadow might get in the way and decides to go the opposite direction. Put himself an opportunity. If he hits, if he hits off and he goes in the back of the net, that could be another one the back of the net. No, off the crossbar instead. It's still 3-1. Oh, the pinch play. But it's off the post and away we go again. Still 3-1. Oh, Cyrix with an easy tap in on the edge of the line makes it 3 2. This is slowly turning into a very close game. It seemed like Sun Moon were in a lot of trouble, but uh, 10 seconds is a long time in Rocket League because I tell you what, they've gone up the other end and they've brought themselves back into the game. Now we go into an important kickoff, yet another one, and this time Shadow won't be able to go for a calculated play. It's Cyrix with a nice shot and great service from Dillawave from the left hand side to make it 3 3. Yeah, this is just copy exactly what Shadow did the other time on the wall very early, gets up nicely, gets the pass down to Cyrex, and Cyrex slams that one in 3 3. And right now, Sun Moon are making those adjustments, so small little adjustments. He said at the start, this is a game of inches, a game of millimeters game of seconds it's, it's milliseconds and that's exactly what you're doing they're making those adjustments and i always say rocket league's a game but if you can adjust better than your opponent you've got a great chance of winning a series yeah and, and the key is not to over adjust because oftentimes in these series you see teams over correct it's like you were doing a lot right it was just the one thing that you needed to change so you know keep the good change the bad and uh you know try put ball in back of net as uh, altruism would say uh now we move on kick ball good yeah yeah kick ball good that too six seconds one minute and just six under six seconds left in this game and karma with the shot oh an absolute beauty from almost out of nowhere yeah it's a lovely play here bit of havoc and defense the pre-flip from andy pre jump from andy i don't know what he's doing there i don't know why he's pre-jumping from so far away he could have left his boost for a little while longer pre-jumping with the ball got closer to karma but he didn't do that karma says thank you very much on slots that went into the back of the net and it's 4-3 now with a minute to go still plenty of time after the clock though for some sweaty plays here, some sweaty moments, and an opportunity here for Sun Moon to level this one up. But is it going to be too little, too late in terms of this game for uh, LMR Legends? They've they've really not been at the races the second half of this game. Yeah, not not quite. Uh, what started out as a very cagey game turned into a very one-sided affair. It was LMR who were in the ascendancy, and as you pointed out, they've just dropped off massively. Now Sun Moon have all the momentum, and it's still a wave who makes a huge That's mistake. It. That's, That's it. a huge mistake. And Andy capitalizes. Oh my word, break this down for us. Again, it's the third man over committing. He's never got a hope winning that ball. I don't know why he's committing so hard for it. He should make Andy think of what he's trying to do, but he's committing hard for the ball. Andy just pushes it over him, puts it in the back of the net, 4-4, we're all tied up. It's, it's a too aggressive. You have a lead. You don't have to be that aggressive when you're playing the game. It's really, really aggressive play. And I... I don't agree with you. I don't agree with it when there's just four minutes at the clock. I don't agree when you have a lead. But that should, might just be in shadow there. They make the save though. Yeah, and I mean, listen, we, we thought the first game of the stream was chaotic. This is as chaotic as they come. Eight goals evenly split between both teams. And we could potentially be going to an overtime barring a miracle. So here we go into overtime. Or, or not! Or not! Ooh. Oh, wow. That was so close. That was so close. But we do go into overtime indeed. 
Yeah, and well, the overtime's not going to last very long because that's a kickoff goal. And Cyrex will roll it in. Dillaway, a playmaker with three assists. He'll be delighted. Wins the kickoff very heavily. And that allows Cyrex to chase up, cheat up, and score that one. Yeah, that's slightly anticlimactic, but GG's to Sun Moon as they take game number two in the Aquadome. Five, four, nine goals between both teams. Talk to me about what we just witnessed. <laughs> chaos. You witnessed chaos. Um, no, we witnessed Sun Moon really fight back hard in that one. Um, deserved winners of that game, in my opinion. Really, especially the second half of that game, they were so consistent. Looked really, really good in the attack. Looked really good in play. Ultimately, uh, uh, too, being too aggressive at times is probably a bit of a downfall, but it's also helped them too. So it's hard to say exactly what they should do. Do they take go away from that aggressive style or do they stick with it? And that's the question now, stick or twist. And of course, going to the game three, most important game in the best of five series, especially when it's all tied up at 1-1. You got to feel that this one's huge. Yeah, I, I think to answer your conundrum, I think I would drop back a bit. I think that was too open for my liking. And I think sometimes in Rocket League, you can you can have too much fun when the game is sort of open-ended and everybody's getting opportunities to shoot at goal. I mean, in terms of the shot count, it was 10 shots to eight. So pretty close. Both teams had lots of chances. Both teams were able to create tangible threats. But I don't know. If I'm Sun Moon, I'm, I'm saying, all right, guys, we, we scored five goals, but we also conceded four, right? So let's apply some context. Let's, uh, you know, be solid defensively. And ahead of the game number three at DFH Stadium, I, I think they've, they've just got to turn it down a notch. I'd agree. I'd agree. I think they're being a bit too aggressive. Um, but, you know, at times, you have, be, you have to be aggressive at times, but there's a time and a place to be aggressive, right? It's not when 40 seconds left and you've got a one goal lead, right? That's not the time to be aggressive. When you're two goals down with a minute and a half left, sure, throw, throw everything at it. Go, um, oh, well, another bad touch. And once again, the lead goes straight to Elmore Legends. Yeah, AK with uh, tons of space there and tons of time on the ball to put that in the back of the net. He was completely uncontested and uh, double commit on the front post. Unfortunately, there was no one back. And that's what happens sometimes, just caught off guard early on. And that could be the difference here. Sun Moon have got to switch on. Cyrix now will take it the other way and they look to respond very quickly. And Cyrix gets past one, unfortunately unable to get past the second. I think he left it for his teammate who unfortunately couldn't get a clean strike on it. Oh, it's, it's been quite the start. And maybe, just maybe, we might see something special here. Oh. As Cyrix looks to set up a great shot but unfortunately it's not to be and shadow with the great save as well there's lots happening in this opening uh, sort of 30 seconds yeah it's really good really good for both sides here you know the one real opportunity that uh elmore edges have had they took with both hands took gleefully with both hands still away nice play he's looking to cause havoc in defense camera looking for a double will get it as well one one what boost manager that was he didn't have much going up but he used it absolutely to perfection yeah, I mean, I almost had to question how much boost the Rocket League car has because I'm convinced he's got 115 instead of 100. Great boost management there by Karma and uh, got his team back into the game. It's one all and uh, every kickoff is starting to feel like an important kickoff. A great demo of the kickoff there by Addy or Andy, sorry. And uh, it's uh, looking pretty good here for both teams. Yeah, there's been... It's definitely picked up in terms of the quality from both teams so far. They both had moments of, you know, being deflated and being... Let's be honest, not up to snuff here in, 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 in this in this stuff, um, in this this kind of game. But both show moments of absolute brilliance and you know some real mechanical ability and some real good team play and teamwork. So hopefully, you see more of that. And that's what we're seeing in this game. I think both teams have settled down a little bit. They're probably maybe a bit nervous being on stream. You know, I mean that that can happen. Your your, your name lights can really affect you a little bit. So, uh, but they've held on strong, they've held firm, and that's the main thing right now. Can they continue to do that? Can they continue to be? You know, pressurizing and making it so difficult for their opponents. Who's going to come out on top in this huge game three? Yeah, well, at the moment, Sun Moon are in a little bit of trouble. They can't get it out of the blue half. It's the orange team pressuring them and peppering that goal. The wave after wave of attacks is finally thwarted by Cyrix with a great ball to De La Wave. And it's great telepathy, great chemistry, and a beautiful finish by De La Wave off of a great pass and a magnificent setup by Cyrix. Oh, my word. 2-1. Yeah, you're not saving those. What a play that is. And until we have just used the pace that Cyrix hits the ball towards him and he just redirects the ball, which is a really smart thing to do. You don't have to hit it hard. You don't have to hit the ball hard all the time. You can let your your teammates work the power on the ball and they use work with that power and put it in the back of the net. Very smart play from Dillawave. 2-1 now and we're looking to continue this on. And it's got a lot more aerial. It's got a lot more mechanical, you feel. First game was very scrappy on the floor. 
you know, not really much aerial plays, people missing the ball. Now it's more consistent. Both teams are showing what they can do mechanically. Yeah, and uh, as you rightly pointed out, precision over power. Ooh, delicacy over speed sometimes as uh, uh, Dillaway nearly gets a shot there. It's now Andy taking it the other way. Karma now who misses the ball, whether it was intentional or not, I'm not too sure. But that seemed intentional and that seemed very risky by Karma as he takes it across his own goal to try thwart an attack here. Uh, Sun Moon have done well to weather the storm, but they've got to be careful. This lead is very, very narrow. Good demo in the middle of the park. Dilla Wave camping on the opposition half, making life difficult for them. But Shadow is able to take it the other way into the path of Karma. That's not a very good clear. And luckily, Andy's on the wall. It remains 2 1. Cherry pick? Ooh. Oh! Trying to cherry pick that one into the back of the net, which of course means just build up field and just try to get it from a pass yeah. down and uh, doing very well in doing so but almost got a ball dropping so oh well Andy somehow managed to keep that one out I don't know how he had no boost to work with had to reuse the last bit to reach it couldn't get any power on the clearance waterfall down pass and almost in it was bouncing weirdly there and that's an awkward touch and that could be 3-1 it is 3-1 karma will slot it home yeah, I, I almost lost count of how many times that ball bounced basically on the goal line or just in front of the goal line. Karma with a great finish, great persistence overall by Sun Moon to create the pressure and double down on their lead. These are the moments that really count in a series. These are the moments where you get to grab the momentum, take the attacking initiative away from your opponents and really, really get in the heads and force them to go to the drawing board whilst you play your comfortable game. Now it's still a wave with a nice little touch forward to create some pressure. Andy with, uh, well, not a very convincing touch to say the least there, but luckily Shadow's there and setting up something beautiful here. It's Andy with a follow-up touch and can AK do something? The answer is no, unfortunately. I think that deserved the goal. Karma will take it the other way and oh, great save by Shadow. Yeah, fantastic save. Good awareness as well. You know, shattered all the time. Did very, very well indeed following his namesake off the backboard now. Good save there. Good bump as well. But and AK there, ah, oh, mm. uh, well, that's just awkward. AK couldn't quite manage to get a touch on the ball, and that gave Karma a chance to slot at home. You see here, just, just can't quite manage to do what he wanted to do with that ball. And Karma says, thank you very much, and just lobs it over Shadow into the back of the net, 4-1. Yeah, well, in karmic fashion, they are 4-1 up due to a lot of individual errors. Similar to the first game, it's almost as if both teams have, have switched roles here. So uh, it, it's quite interesting how these things work out. Now it's AK with a dangerous shot. Dillawave, lucky not to bump into his teammate there because that could have been catastrophic to say the least. It's Cyrix now who takes it the other way and uh, Dillawave will give chase. AK's got to be very careful here. Karma with a nice touch, laying it up for his demoed teammate. His fallen teammate will not be able to get on the end of that. Very handy work by by LMR there to keep themselves, well, you know, from further embarrassment. Yeah, 15 seconds to go. You feel this game is over. Sun Moon will be one win away from seeing round five their opponents, one loss away from exiting in round four and taking three points with them. Three precious points, as we said, because of course, you know, the Invitational coming up, but that's a big goal from Cyrex. Just puts an exclamation point on this victory in game number three. Perhaps saying you got the best of the game one, but you're not going to get the best of the rest of the series. Yeah, and, and correct me if I'm wrong, but that's the second consecutive time they've scored five, five past their opponents. So, uh, yeah, adding salt into the wounds and adding insult to injury in, in a literal sense here. Dilla Wave will calmly bring it down. Oh, that should be game. It is game, but, uh, you know, it's, it's about keeping the ball up now. You know, they're, they're looking for a goal. Both teams are want to finish on a high, and they will finish on a high. What a save on the line by Dillaway. I thought that was in the back of the net. Not quite. Karma will smart let that one go down. Doesn't want to give any momentum back to the opposition team. But what a save for Dillaway after a great shot at zero seconds. Yeah, and it, it displays uh, great concentration, great mentality to not give up, especially when you're 5-1 up with literally zero seconds on the clock. You know, it's very easy to just kind of be nonchalantly chilling on the back post, not expecting a shot like that. But great wave, great, great work by Dilla Wave, pardon me, to thwart that attempt. Now, if, if you are LMR, what do you change going into this? I asked you what Sun Moon should change. What do LMR need to do? Because I don't think they've overcommitted or been too aggressive. I think it's just been individual errors. It has been, yeah. That, that's been the problem. You know, they, They've been clinical when they've had to be. They've taken advantage of their opponents' opportunities very smartly. Whenever, whenever uh, someone gives them a chance, they take it usually with both hands. 
you feel like you have to be better in defense. There's been a few times they went defense there that they've let the ball hang around far too long. It's even opportunities for Sun Moon to set up great plays, take players out with bumps and demos. And that just makes it far too easy. You have to clear the ball out your half as quickly as possible in Rocket League because you leave it too long, it's going to make it very awkward for your opponent, for yourselves to get out of the half. Yeah, no, absolutely. It will. And uh, it's, it's, it's a difficult situation here going into the Coliseum over to Utopia here for LMR because now they are behind after going up early on in the series. We're awaiting the start of game number four in the series and it really feels like Sun Moon are in the ascendancy. So perhaps our predictions, you know, prematurely are going to be right. Uh, time will tell as we wait for game number four to start. Yeah, what would you prefer? Are you right or game number five? That's my question. I think I prefer game number five. I yeah, love game yeah. fives. I love, love game five. Absolutely. I, I've got no issues with that. It's Karma now. Ooh. Oh, how has that not gone in? A great shot from Karma. It's hit both posts, I think, and then rolled out. And now Cyrix unable to follow up what would have been a great run because of a demo. Handy just chilling on the back. I don't know what that's about. I guess he was in an awkward position to take the shot and couldn't do anything about it. So he thought, you know what? I'm going to let this roll over my bonnet and then decide what to do afterwards. I think he should have jumped there. Uh, honestly, not for enough of the ball, but for one of the players. Make it as difficult as possible for him to read that play. Make it extremely hard for that to happen. He just kind of stands in net. He's trying to make it awkward, but he's kind of all he does is kind of make the players play around him, which is kind of what they want to do a little bit anyway. So I would have gone, I would have jumped there myself and made it very difficult for anyone to see. Got to use my boost. That's a great shot. That's a great save from Cyrex. Ball cleared out for now into halfway, but Shadow will keep the attack alive, but only finding Karma. Karma looking to get this one up. Managed to do so, but Andy is there. Clear this one all the way down to halfway. Give Shadow an opportunity to chase, but nothing comes from it. Yeah, nothing comes from it indeed. And uh, a minute of Rocket League gone, no goals yet. But Andy in a dangerous position. Unfortunately, that goes over his head. Shadow now looking for another setup. It's Karma with uh, a very looping touch forward. And that could have caused problems, but luckily Shadow is back. And uh, Sun Moon decide not to overcommit. Now it's Cyrix with time, space on the ball. But Andy taking advantage of perhaps a complacent attitude there from his opponent. And well, unfortunately, nothing comes from it, but it could have very easily ended up badly there for Sun Moon. It could have indeed, but uh, they managed to hold firm. And that's the main thing. You know, Rocket League's all about holding firm sometimes. And here he's looking for bumps and demos. It's very well, but Dilla Waves is very well to avoid it, actually. Very nice to do. And I said, Ellen Warren, to look for those bumps and demo plays. And Dilla Waves now gets taken out again. Very smart play there defensively. Just get the player off the field, make the attack, reset, and may give yourself an opportunity. Here's a chance here to score. Ball coming down, but it's well saved. We did a double commit, though. That's going to give a chance, but AK can't get a touch he wanted on that one. And that's going to allow Sun Moon to reset. Yeah, and on two occasions, as you pointed out there, there was a double commit from Sun Moon. They've got to cut that out. You've got to trust the teammate and listen to the call out. When he says he's got it, he's got it. And if he doesn't have it, then too bad. But you've got to trust your teammate, man. Unfortunately for uh, LMR, it doesn't lead to anything. And fortunately for Sun Moon, they're still in this game now as Andy looks to take it the other way with zero boost in the tank. Does really well to produce a shot with no boost and virtually no momentum there and uh it's parried out of danger so sun moon will take it the other way yeah, very smart jumped off the wall and saved saved his, his flip for the last second there managed to get across it nicely and get, a, get an opportunity created for his team and for himself but still sun moon handling firm here they're looking dangerous when they come forward and counter attack they're not getting many opportunities to attack the Zellamore team here have really buckled down a lot they're looking a lot more consistent than they did in games two and three and they've had opportunities to score didn't quite get up for that, but I left that smartly off the post. It goes though. Opportunity for another one, but followed up and denied. Karma could get a goal the other end. He will get a goal the other end. 1 0. What a defensive stand from this Sun Moon side. Yeah, and that's absolutely heartbreaking for LMR. It looks like they were going to score at the other end, and just like that, their ascendancy is absolutely demolished by Sun Moon. It All it takes is one mistake, but they've still got a minute and 50 to rectify their mistakes and change the narrative here as Andy goes all the way up to the ceiling, perhaps backs out at the last second because of a call from Shadow, or maybe it's just a woof. Who knows? Who knows, really? It's Andy now taking it back the other way. Karma will clear. It's not a very convincing clearance, but I don't think anyone... Oh, never mind. AK is going to win it. I was going to say that nobody from LMR is going to win it. Andy now with the shot, and it's a P-roller to get the better of the opponent and make this game one all. Smart shot, lovely pass center, first of all. Andy realizes the pre-jump's coming 
and just slides it under his car into the net. 1-1. One, one. We're all tied up here. And it's nothing more than a more deserved. It deserves to be level in this game. Perhaps it deserves to be ahead, but, you know, they've really played well. They've come out, you know, from a real drumming in game number three there. And they've woken up here and said, no, we're not going down without a fight. And that's what you love to see, especially in Rocket League, especially in this region. Yeah, and from a neutral point of view, we all want to see a game five anyway. So it's uh, fantastic stuff. I've got no complaints indeed. It's Shadow now looking to pull off something special. <gasps> and uh, it's a good shot from AK and a good save, an equally spectacular save. And Cyrix will take it the other way. It's not out of the woods here for LMR. They've got to be very careful. The wave of pressure here is thwarted by Shadow. Oh, beats two men and unfortunately can't get the last one. Yeah, that's a great effort, a great opportunity there get some offense on the board good passing there in the goal line from i believe it was cyrex trying his best to cause absolute havoc really pass center what a save off the post from andy brilliant play pre-jump that one off the wall had to do that camera looking for a flip preset gets it but can't get it on target it's over the player but not on target and you know it's all well and good getting the flip reset when you can but you have to get it on target you have to get those opportunities on net and cyrex have to chase the ball back now yeah, and, and that's the thing about mechanics is uh, it's great to display your mechanical excellence, but there's got to be end product. It's Andy now in a dangerous place. I don't quite know what's going on here, but Dillawave doesn't care. It's 2-1, and unfortunately for LMR, they've been the devils of their own demise here. Yeah, two opportunities clear that ball, takes neither of them, and that sets up the opportunity for Dillawave just to roll that one in. That could be the goal that seals the series. That could be the goal. That sealed Sun Moon spot in the Invitational as well, which would be huge for them. And he knocking his ball downfield for now. Opportunity here, clearing up the field. The ball falling down. It's going to be zero second goal. No, it's denied by Dillaway. AK had the shot. Shadow will keep it alive for now. Up on the wall, looking to create something for his teammate or himself. But that ball's cleared away. It will hit the floor. Sun Moon are your winners in game four to take the series down by three to one. Yeah, I mean, unfortunate there from LMR. They were literally the architects of their own downfall. It's truly unfortunate and perhaps a little bit anticlimactic because I think we were all hoping for a game five. But GG to Sun Moon. They were the favorites coming into this and uh, our predictions, uh, you know, turned out to be true. And the chat prediction, chat predictions as well. Chat prediction correct too. So it's uh, it's only one person who's uh, been around the desk. And speaking of that one person who's around the desk, I think they're joining us back now. Uh, how are you feeling for that one? <laughs> uh, I mean, I had to. I had to give a little bit of love to LMR. We we have to just give a little bit of love to Reunion Island in general. The two teams they brought in a very interesting series. I mean, we're, we're going to go into a short breakdown there, but all I want to say is congratulations to Sun Moon. I, I, I don't feel too bad about my prediction. It is my job as the host to keep this objective at the end of the day. But moving into that that crazy, crazy lineup, I mean, Triple Moon, as we we, do, we talked a little bit about it, you know, the the execution from, from LMR, it 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 really starts off strongly. It, it starts off aggressive. You know, Morky Morky, you mentioned it. They needed to start off aggressive. They needed to really try and punt it at Sun Moon. And they did that. I mean, especially for those first uh, three games, I believe, they were the opening goals. They found those opening goals. They started off really well. And then we get to that one minute, 30 second marker. And from both sides, it's weird. It, it's both Sun Moon steps up. It's both LMR stepped out. It, so Triple M, let's start just with, with, with Sun Moon specifically. You know, they, they slow start into the games and then a little bit of an awkward jump back, but they, they really made that turnaround coming through game number three. Yeah, it, it looked like the cohesion and the teamwork was was definitely rectified in game number two and following into game number three and then obviously game number four. That's one of the biggest differences I noticed. The individual areas kind of stopped. There was a few double commits, but not really too much to cost them at the end of the day. And unlike their opponents, they really focused on the team play. So I, I think that that's really what gave them the edge today. We know the mechanical ability of Dillawave, Karma and Cyrex. It's, it's there. It's just about the cohesion. It's just about how you can work as a team. And I think they did that fantastically also capitalizing their the, the mistakes of their opponents knowing where to position yourself the rotations mm -hmm. that's key you know not over committing leaving an extra car always on the halfway line just in case a counter-attack starts to develop at the other end they did the fundamentals well and you know i think that's why they won today absolutely and i i do believe that game three was that pivot point when we were one one up you know when it was looking like it was going to go either way that game number three came through and that's where the control really set in for sun moon and i think that's what that really threw lmr off the ground is because all of a sudden it's like they were playing a completely different team morky Mort, you mentioned you know for, for lmr it was jumping into that aggression and again 
they started off in the first couple of games really well for them, but then there would be this weird, awkward energy that would just come out. And I, I really don't know how to explain it. What do you think really broke down other than the in- individual mistakes? Was it just that? Was there something else that caused them to to not really being able to just clean it up, you know, just to reset themselves? I don't know. I, I think it was a mix of kind of individual errors and also just perhaps at times not being confident enough in themselves. Uh, that being said, I refuse to have any player in chat uh, put themselves down. So Andy, you're not you're not bad. You're a fantastic player. You stop that right now, okay? Um, Andy, no, no. What? Yeah. What, what? 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 I wanted to say though is that I believe yeah, some individual errors were there, but that happens. You know, especially on stream, it's a difficult environment. The lights are on. You know, everyone's watching. You know, you've got a lot of pressure on you. So those mm. mistakes are going to happen. I feel what happened is that Sun Moon were able just to pull it together a bit more ultimately than LMR were. I think LMR played really well at times, looked really good mechanically, uh, surprised me, I think surprised everybody in stream, honestly. Um, but I, I think ultimately Sun Moon were just a bit more consistent. Okay. No, I, I, I think I'm going to call it there. And I mean, when we when we took a look at LMR, especially in the beginning, I mean, Andy was the goal maker. I mean, there were so many setups that Andy really put through for LMR. If it wasn't for Andy, looking at you, we wouldn't have seen the goals that we did. I mean, Shadow also was the, the goalkeeper, as you said, from the shadows. Just some of the goal saves that we saw in that series were, as you, you mentioned, Triple M, I mean, the, you lost count of the times that we went. We nearly went past that goal line. We nearly got into the goal points. And then these, these last-minute saves just came on through. It was, it was brilliant to watch. I mean, how did, how did you enjoy all of these last-minute saves? Yeah, I mean, I mean, it was fantastic. Shadow did a lot of work defensively, but the standout moment wasn't even the saves for me. It was that play off the kickoff, that just individual brilliance on Acrodome, absolute, you know, savagery. You know, he, he needs to go take a shower because that was disgusting. So big up to Shadow. Honestly, it was a fantastic individual performance. And I would say the same about AK. I would say the same about Andy as well. Individually, they were okay. It was just as a team, you know, sometimes it is what it is. You come up against a better team and you shouldn't beat yourself up about it. But just to take it back to Shadow, like hats off. Oh, Amazing. It, it was disgusting. It actually, like, I, I nearly fell off my chair there, but it was an immediate answer to Sun Moon as well. It's exactly what they needed. It almost looked like they broke the momentum there of Sun Moon and we were going to be having a completely different conversation when it came back to the desk. But again, it's just those final points of execution, as we've mentioned before, you know, those, those few second mistakes that really do, they can cost you the match, they could cost you the series. And ultimately, even towards that last map, I mean, we, we, we saw that moment where we thought, okay, well, this is the return of LMR. Are we, are we going to a map five? And, and just those final points. But again, it's an opportunity for the cleanup there. So LMR, they've got plenty of odds. They showed us plenty of amazing points. And as you mentioned, Triple M, just, you know, keep the good, keep the, the good because they, they're really good. Just, you know, fix a few of the small mistakes and maybe bringing in a little bit more of that cohesion. Morky Mork, I mean, for you, standout moment, we've, we've heard from uh, from Triple M, it was that, that, that fantastic push there from Shadow. What were some of the standout moments for you in this previous series? I think that filthy double tap, uh, I forget who scored it, but it was absolutely filthy. Uh, it was a lovely goal. It's just, just brilliant play, using the bottom of his car to knock the ball into the back of the net. I think it was AK actually did it. Uh, it was a fantastic double tap. I think it's my favorite goal of the series. Um, you know, the, those kickoff goals are class as well, but I think that one was just pure mechanical skill and it showed exactly how good they can be. Oh, it has been some fantastic maps. And I mean, as we take a look at some of the results that we've been uh, getting a good idea of, between Red Crown and the Bros, we do have a confirmation. Red Crown took that Series 3-0, so that, that one was not close whatsoever. But between May Contain Nuts and ATK, we have a 3-1 scoreline. So a little bit a little bit of action from ATK, but uh, unfortunately, yeah, May Contain Nuts, they came back for Altruism and they said, don't worry, we're just going to drop one map today. We're going to continue, though. As we move on forward, Sun Moon, as we know, took that 3-1 series, a very close and contentious one as well between Astronic and Arian. They're also running that 3-1, and uh, we're still waiting for Unity to give us the answer, Triple M. So you are going to just have to wait a little while. But uh, White Rabbit and Apex Gaming would all be taking a 3-1 scoreline to White Rabbit there. So ultimately, these teams are really stepping up into the final moments of Swiss. They are looking to end, put an end to the chaos and get the qualifications. If you go down to our final moments, I mean, Triple, just the final final thoughts of the day, just what you've seen and what you've experienced. How's it been going? Yeah, it's been a very entertaining day of Rocket League. I mean, I, I thought nothing could top the start of the stream with that absolute, you know, I, I don't know, I don't even know what word to use, but the chaos that occurred in the first game. And then to have that repeated again, just in the series that we watch now. I mean, what was it? 5-4 four, four in the first game? 
nine goals between both teams in in an opening game of a series in Rocket League at the business end of the competition, mind you. So you can't say you know they weren't warmed up or anything. This is this is deep into the Swiss stage. It's crazy. It's absolutely crazy, and I'm loving it. I'm loving the competitiveness. I'm loving the narratives that are being built. The players that are really making a name for themselves. And look to see both teams uh, from Union Island finally get the love that they deserve is also a big positive. So shout out to them. And uh, yeah, I'm, I'm just excited to see where it goes for the rest of the weekend. Okay, Mark, also for you, jumping into, as you said, from the first regional into this one, you know, just the, the difference in what you've seen from these players, the skill that they've brought in, the development that they brought into the region, which is always good. I mean, the more, the, the better teams that we have, the better the other teams have an opportunity to better themselves. So that experience is now filtered through, I mean, the the key takeaway now, also witnessing, you know, these these two two fantastic teams from Union, well, from hurting my brain today, Reunion Island. What are some of the, the main points that you feel like there is still a little bit of room for, but that we're, we're really just kicking off well? Um, I definitely think the mechanical plays are definitely being improved upon a bit. Um, but I definitely think the speed, the consistency, um, the team plays, the passing plays, um, a lot, the, the physical plays even have really come in. Um, because physical plays are OP in Rocket League, we all know that. Um, and it's really nice to see them develop that to such a level that they're really, really good at it. And they're bringing it to such a high level now that they're really unstoppable. And they're, they're going to cause problems at Worlds, whoever makes it. And it's, it's bloodbath. It's a bloodbath team makes Worlds. But whoever makes it is going to give a, give any team a run for the money right now. That's what I'm predicting. <laughs> well, we do appreciate that, of course. And a massive shout out, of course, to Triple M and Morky Moore for bringing us that fantastic series of action. It was, yo, it was keeping me on the edge of my seat and hopefully keeping our viewers on the edge of our seats. We are going to go to a short break while we prepare the last series of the day. So stay with us. The action's right around the corner.
Welcome back, everyone, to the RLCS Full Cup, of course, for the SSA region. We just finished a fantastic series, but unfortunately, we said uh, goodbye to LMR. They, they really brought through a fantastic set of absolutely fantastic plays, but ultimately, it was Sun Moon to close it out. And as we head into our last series of the day, we're also going to be revisiting Sun Moon, but then see this time how they're going to be facing up against the Bros moving on into their last matchup of the day. So it's definitely going to be an interesting one. Of course, joined once again by Morky Walk and Mr. Greybeard himself to bring us the action into this last series. So Greybeard, you know, before we delve into SM mm. and the Bros, let's talk a little bit about that uh, Invitational and uh, at least one slot that's left. I hear we have a three-way tie. Yeah, the teams are now locked in. So just a reminder, for the third regional, the Fall Invitational, there are no qualifiers. It is pretty much the top 16 teams are invited to play that. There is one slot available, and we have a three-way tiebreaker that has to be played. Yeah, and I'm not sure when that'll be, later in the week or maybe next weekend. And that's between LMR, Unity, and who's the third team? Ice. ice. So Ice, yeah. So Ice were on three points at the end of the first regional. They didn't qualify for this one, so they couldn't improve. And with the way Swiss has gone tonight, and there has been a bit of chaos, means we have the three-way tiebreak. So that's a bit of exciting news. Uh, so the top 15 teams are locked in, but that last place, Ooh. we wait and see. Oh, that is insane. But of course... It, it, it's just good Rocket League fashion. I mean, we had Swiss Chaos. We have to have a little bit more Chaos at the end of it. So it's going to work out one way or another. Now, Mork, we just saw Sun Moon and we just saw their performances. As you mentioned, it looks like game two to three. That's really where that control came back in. That's really mm -hmm. where that cast of prediction version of Sun Moon came on in and they brought the win home. What do you think now needs to happen between their matchup to the pros? Do you think they can afford at least one or two games where they suss out their competition and sort of reset those control gains, or do they need to run out of the gate with their absolute best foot forward? They have to go with the best foot forward against the pros. The pros are such a good team. Uh, they're so talented, all three of them. They're all very good players. You know, Christian, 5BS, and you know, Pico. You know, just so, so good. And it's been so difficult to see exactly how some of them could fight out of this one. But they got the momentum on their side, of course. They're coming off a win, which is huge. Saw so, uh, more. So at the start of that series, Elmore looked more confident, looked more in the zone because they were coming off a win. So mm. using that momentum is going to be really, really important for this Sun Moon side, but also they have to come out fighting at the gate. They have to really be strong at the gate, but they can't be as aggressive as they were in the last series. So that aggressive in this series is going to get punished by this bro side. That's true, that's true. So, uh, hey, no, no no, chances. Don't take any chances right out of the gate. Really be bringing their best foot forward. And again, for our viewers, if you want to let us know what your predictions are going to be looking like, remember to use the hashtag bro or the hashtag SM in chat if you want to let us know who's going to be taking this final series and who's really going to be rising to the top. Is it going to be SM again for Union Island or is it going to be the bros moving on in with their own win? For you, Greybeard, I mean, moving on in, comparing, you know, watching from the sidelines how Sun Moon, they were, there was a little bit of fumble, there was a little bit of, like, awkwardness, but they, they brought it back. They composed mm. themselves and they brought it back. Now, moving on into a, a, an opponent like the Bros, what do you think they're going to be bringing to the table? How are the Bros going to be starting out this series? This is, so this is a, a confusing part of the, of the equation for me because the team, and I spoke about this at the beginning, Bros should not be going to round five of swiss you know the, mm. they should be three they should be three wanting this and, and going through for the second regional in a row they find themselves duking it out in the fifth round so on paper they should be the team that take this but we just don't know and and you know they're either winning three nothing or they're losing three nothing which is different to last regional where every every series went to five games um whereas sun moon sun moon for me are in a great position they didn't qualify for the last regional. They've qualified for this. They've already done really, really well. So they're almost in a go out there and have a blast phase of things. You know, there's almost no expectation. They're on the fun part of the equation. And I think that might give them a little bit of extra. All right. Well, as we head into, well, as we're getting ready to head into the next series, I need to have a quick few predictions from R2. So let's start it off with Mork. Who's going to be taking it, the pros or SM? Oh, yeah, you can't look past the bros. They're just so good. They're so talented. Mm. Again, as you said, they shouldn't be here. They should be already true, but they're not. You know, they had a tough match in the last round. That's not got it wrong. That's not because they got confused here. They had a very tough match in the last round, but that doesn't matter. It's not about how you finish it out. I think the bros are just too strong for Sun Moon. Love you, Jota, but I just don't see it going there your way today. 71% to 29% in favor of the bros, at least in chat. Greybeard, are you going to be backing those stats? 
Well, what that means is 21% of our chat are Reunion Islanders. <laughs> Which is great. They came. It was wonderful to see their passion in the chat in the last round. I would love to see a reunion island on day two. I, I just don't know. I do think bro make it hard for themselves, but they'll clutch out in the end. I'm going to hold the candle for, uh, for, for Sun Moon. I'm going to hope that they're going to be bringing Someone in that needs patrol. To. Absolutely. And I will be holding the candle right until the end. But of course, we need to get ready for this next matchup. So with that being said, we're going to give it off to our fantastic casters. For the last time today is Morky Mork and Mr. Gravy and himself to bring you all the action for this next series. Morky, you, you know this team better than I do, having just seen them and, and taken them through. can Maybe some of that island spirit will see them through. It could do, you know, they, they were really good in that game two and three, and game four as well, they clutched up nicely. So, you know, they, they have the, the skill, they have the ability, and that's the thing. The middle of this pack is getting closer and closer together. I love to see that. The region is becoming more and more competitive. Make it notes lost today. Who would have saw that coming? Uh, Reform clearly did, but no one else would have said that in the script. But, um, you know, right now, mm. fantastic start here. What a game we're going to see here. I think it's going to be close. I think the bros are going to win it, but I think it's, I think oh. it's going to take a game. What an absolute bully behavior there from 5BS. Yeah, it was <laughs> it was BS there on the on the goal line, and Christian just had to get it on target. The last defender shoved out of the way, and there we go, bros with the early start. A fantastic start for them indeed in this game as the ball goes pretty neutral on kickoff, but it's going to be Pio Pego who's in the uh, in the the, the, the meme car uh, for now, <laughs> <laughs> having having a bit of fun looking here to get that one in. It will do so as well. Scarab coming up clutch almost at the end again. We were able to do so, but it's still 1-0. And uh, Dela Wave here will get a little fish. Dela Wave had a great series last time, Greybeard. I don't know if you're watching, but what a series mm. he had. In lobbies. And, and he is, I mean, listen, you can't compare him to me because I'm rubbish. But uh, it, it was great to see him. And I'm not surprised he's had a good series. And I am very torn here. Oh, Christian W is going to get his second this time through sheer pace and power. But 5BS involved again with the pass to Yopega. Yopega into the middle. And Christian W with the clattering finish. Yeah, very good beat there. It'll be pass center and then he uses all of the momentum of his car to slam that one into the back of the net make it 2-0 not a, not the start here to someone wanted but they, they went behind early in the last series as well so you know not surprised to see but the bros here you know they're they're not messing a bit right now uh graybeard they are here to fight they're here to fight for their place in tomorrow's bracket and they really 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 want to be up there and really and give us a good shot of being a high seed for next week or next well, that, time well the way it goes uh, with bro tonight is if, if they lose this, they're going to go down pretty much in a sweep. But if they win it, it's going to be three games in a row. Uh, I think that's kind of where they're playing right now. And uh, and so far, early indications is I do think they have, just from a pace point of view, they're just all over Sun Moon so yeah. quickly. And I think that's going to be enough to see them through ultimately. Yeah, probably it's just enough to see them through. But you never know. Rocket League is a game that's not played on paper. It's played on ones and zeros. And... Cyrex now here bringing this ball up the field, looking to get the pinch, perhaps no, not quite able to do that. And Spago positioned himself well anyway to make sure nothing was going to come from that. Lovely pass center for IBS just misreads that a little bit. Cyrex are looking for a double, gets it into the corner as well. Opportunity here perhaps, but Tobago's there back defensively, doing very well. That booming clear is going to make a reset here. Now for both teams, whoa, no, oh no, 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 oh no. Yeah, that's just pad, panic panic in your own corner. Dilla wave had a, had a bit more time than he thought, but sort of panics and trying to take it up at the wall, probably over the goal line, over the goal post, and uh, doesn't doesn't get there. Lands up passing it and presenting on a plate a hat trick to Christian W. Yeah, very very nicely done, for Christian W. There. Right place, right time. But yeah, so I bet just a little bit of panic at defense and. So, I mean, you know, they're 3-0 down, there's, there's no point panicking, you know, you're 2-0 down already, there's no point, you know, worrying about what's going to happen the other end of the pitch. Right now, just concern, focus on your gameplay, focus mm -hmm. on what you're doing, and don't focus on your opponents, you know, you're behind already, and it's 4-0, sure, you are off the post, how does that not gone in? It hasn't, though, that's going to give a chance here, so many Cyrex will build from the pressure here, well, don't know why Dilbev came in like that, still a bit of boost there in the tank for his teammate, that's a bit of calm issues coming out as well now here for this, this orange team. 
you know, I, I'm so torn here, Morky. I, you know, I, well, firstly, firstly, Sun Moon have got to use the rest of this game just to get themselves settled and right and go, okay, we're going to lose this, but let's, let's get our Rocket League solid. Let's get rid of the panic and, and stress in front of the goal line. But I'm, oh, another pass this time to your Pago, and they got to deal with this. There's a minute and a half left, and if they do nothing else, they got to get rid of this. The, look at this, just lining it up for their opposition. Yeah, to walk it as well shows the comms aren't quite there at no one Greybeard, which is you know really problematic when you're a Rocket League team because comms are really underrated in Rocket League in my opinion you know everyone talks about how fast teams are mechanical players are but you know some of the best players out there people like Rain Wave people like Metsonora people like Archie you know they're, they're very good at their comms as well as their, their mm. you know mechanical ability and you know all these players it's something they have they can pick up on and right now the bros seem to have that communication nailed down because they know exactly where everyone is in the pitch whereas Sun Moon is chasing their tail a little bit right now yeah and uh, oh here we go maybe the fifth no it's not to be but to, to finish my thought I, I, I'm a little torn here because you know I, I think the scene needs this bros team to do well firstly just for the community they represent a really important part of the rocket league scene here in south africa but also your pago uh, been around a long time christian w young up-and-coming player and and of course five bs who's, who's had a bit of action last season but they, they need to do well it's important for the scene but my word reunion island have given so much passion to this re region's rocket league mm. I, I really want to have uh, a, a, an island team up in that top eight competing on day two of the main event but right now oh they are going to get one back though through the work of Cyrix. so a little bit of a little bit of sunshine in what's been a a, a tough four minutes for them yeah fips looking for this glitch you say he didn't have any boost to work with so just trying his best to get up in there that ball that's a great place from cyrex puts that into the back of the net five one now and that could be the, what they need. You know, the last game, the last game, they were behind a good bit in the last game after game one, the last series, sorry, in game one. They managed to fight back nicely and really take it to their opponents. I think the last game won by four goals to one. So, you know, the similar scoreline here in this one. The question is, can they fight back in games two and three? That's going to be the big decider how they're going to do here. But love to see Reunion Island. Love to see some, uh, you know, you know, people outside of just South Africa really represented in this RLCS. It's great to see. Mm. Well, this, the last the last minute or so has been better for Sun Moon. They have looked the most settled they've been the entire game. They've they've most of the game they've been sort of chasing their tails a little bit, trying to get some control. And it's probably a function of trying to meet the pace of 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 the Bros. And I, there's no winning there for them. It's being smart, maybe being a bit more patient and sticking to and playing their own game. So a very dominating win by the Bros in game one. But a tiny bit of less less moonshine, more sunshine toward the end there for Sun Moon. Yeah, for certain. And you know, having one shot on target, one goal, you know, that, that's that's that, that's one anniversary right there, hundred percent. You know what I mean? Keep that up there, you probably win the series. You know what I mean? So mm. it's definitely not over yet. You know what I mean? It's still three games to play potentially, with two games to play potentially. There's still plenty of time here for Sun Moon to get things right. And you're right, the last ninety seconds they look a lot more consistent. They're actually causing Bros problems. You know, having some frays into their opponent's half. And that's, that's, that's a really big thing. All right. And then, um, uh, so there's a lot for them to work on right now. Based on the first game, and, and, and as I, I never tire of making the point that it's dangerous to base a prediction of the whole series on the first game. Um, but on the, on the face of what we saw here, bros, bros just looking that much quicker. And I think if Sun Moon go back to their basics, they'll have better success than just trying to match and beat bros to the ball. Yeah, yeah, that, that's the thing, right? You sometimes get caught up in your opponent's play style. And once you get caught up in your opponent's play style, that's it. Because your opponents are more than nine times out of ten going to play their play style better than you mm. can play their play style, right? So it's all about just trying to sit, settle in, fix your own game plan, try to outstrat your opponents rather than try to outbeat them in pace. Because at this level, there's so little separating these teams uh, in terms of mechanics, in terms of ability, that it just comes down to that. How can you settle in? How can you use your strategy to mm. outthink your opponent's strategy, right? It's, it's a game of inches, a game of margins. And right now, Sun Moon are just losing those margins. 
All right, well, here we are in game two. A full reset for them, so hopefully, and there we go. Karma looking, oh, I didn't quite get the first touch he wanted, so couldn't follow it, but here's Karma. Oh, looking for the pinch pass. Serix is up. We'll head it toward the net. Is there someone from Sun Moon to finish it up? Karma's up and can't get it on target. But a much more positive, bright start for Sun Moon Gaming. Yeah, a bit of a double commit there as well. Midfield from the uh, the bros, so panicking a little bit now themselves. Well, they'll clear the ball out for now. A little, little bouncer there. If IBS will take out his opponent as well. Christian looking to get his, I believe, his fifth goal of the series already, but unable to do so. Yopego is there, but Karma gets a bye and beats him nicely. And now Karma looking to get something going on offense, but no one coming in center. And that just needed someone there just to help him out a little bit, uh, Greenberg. Yeah, but this is but this is good. They've gone they've gone well over a minute now without conceding. They they're keeping it competitive. This is good, but they got to stop that. They're lining up their opponents, and that's going to result in a goal. And this is the third goal scored directly through a passing play from Sun Moon to the Bros. Yeah, a lot more difficult that side. Maybe made, made it somewhat more difficult, but at this level, they're going to punish you every time you pass the ball to them like that in the center net. I know it's a difficult one. We'll just try and pinch it out into the corner. If it goes wrong, the worst is going to happen. It's going to slow the ball down. That one could just be a nose wide and 5BS here will pass that. Pass it to his opponents, but they can't capitalize like the bros have been so far on those passes. And both teams panicking a little bit of defense there, Greybeard. Yep. <clears throat> but as long as it's the one. Oh, no. Oh, oh no. no. Oh, no. Oh, <laughs> no. Gone from passing to scoring. That's not the direction you want to be going in this huge pressure here from the bros. Christian W given all the time in the world and he just carries it in like a butler bringing lunch. Yeah, Cyrix there decides to go up the wall. I don't know why he doesn't just commit there. He has to commit at some stage to something there, a challenge, something, get, even get the bump to make it more difficult for Christian to knock that one in. And, this is his teammate stuck with no boost in the, on the, the, the goal line, so he can't get up in time either. So, very difficult one there, but Cyrex, you feel, just has to be a bit more smart defensively. 2-0 now, the bros. Really, after the first minute and a half, we're looking kind of, you know, second best for part of it, and now they're 2-0 up already. It shows how quickly a game could turn on his head, mm. Well, we saw this earlier with... Uh... Uh, with Red Crown and Orlando Pirates. You know, a game looks close until one team decides they've had enough. They settle in and they just start to run away with it. And right now, it looks like the bros might be doing just that. Zurich's got important work to do. Doesn't get the clear. Karma with a panic touch. Dillawave tries to follow, but he can't get there. Yopego will finish it off. And now the bros looking firmly in charge. Again, it's just, just panic. Hit the ball, like C ball, hit ball. That seems to be the game plan in defense of Sun Moon. And it's not the smartest game plan at all. If Karma just let that ball roll by him, it's going up the wall, it's going into safe place. Yeah, sure, it's still probably going to be a bro's ball, but it's a lot more difficult to get a shot on target from that angle than it is from right in front of the net. Yeah, but again, I think it's worth emphasizing this. Uh, Sun Moon did very, very well to qualify, to find themselves here in the Fall Cup. And, and they've gone to too, you know, I, I, I think most, you know, uh, Skill Steel and I did a bit of a pre-show. This is going to be a fourth goal. It's going to be Christian W who's on a tear, six goals in the series so far. But, um, and, and we didn't give, have much hope for Sun Moon winning any of these games, but here they are in round five of Swiss. So they've done well with that, but I think they're up against a team that's a level above. Yeah. And it it's looking like that. You know, the first minute and a half, they were holding their own. They were doing very well. But it's five, you know, from the kickoff. Five BSs. Yeah, I'm going to score just to make it my name as well. So, uh, good goal here. Lovely kickoff. And then Five BS hits that with a lot of power. Gives uh, Karma no chance to save that. Sorry, C-Rex no chance to save that one. Five nil now. But, yeah, it's, it's definitely a little bold. But, you know, they've achieved their goal. So, mm -hmm. half. They, got to the, they got to round five. They got to four points. They're qualified for the Fall Cup Invitational. Oh. They, they've done everything that they'll, they'll, they would have hoped coming in here, you know what I mean? So they, can, they can't be too mad at themselves. Yeah, know. 5 BS now getting in on the action. A hat-trick for himself here, but the whole team involved. Great kicker from Christian. Lovely follow from Yopego. And then 5 BS with the finishing touch. So, yeah, this is uh, pretty much really out of control here for Sun Moon. And I think they're at the stage of like, okay, gentlemen, this is uh, this is school is in session. What are the lessons we learn here? What what do we take out of this uh, going forward into our scrimming and uh, uh, how do we come back better? 
yeah, that's going to be the really important thing. How did they come back better? How did they learn from this? And that, that's the thing. Some, sometimes it's, it's good. Sirex, oh! stop that, you animal. What a goal this is. <laughs> little pinch in the back of the neck, Greybeard. And then also making work because Dillawave came in and kind of kind of uh, ruined the ceiling shot but saw the opportunity for the fence uh, the pinch so wonderful adaptation from him to see that in and you know what they've scored in both games so that's something they can work on something positive to take from it and now and, and the last minute for them was good can they make the last minute and a half a positive one get two more two or three more on the board a little bit of confidence going into game three yeah they're going to of course need all that confidence and get going to game three they're facing an absolute, well, you talk about a mountain area on OP, of course, around the Pirates up against Red Care Esports. They went 2-0 they went up in that series, but I feel like that was K2. This is Mount Everest, if they want to really do something <laughs> special. Uh, you know, it's going to be very, very difficult for Sunmoon to fight back in. Ooh. But maybe they get some goals. Sirex gets his third of the series, and it's 6-2. And uh, Sirex, suddenly a little bit of extra juice in the... Uh in the boost tank there getting there beating 5bs in that bottom left hand corner and they double their goal tally from game one with a minute to go yeah brilliant play from them you know that, that, that's, that's an improvement you know they conceded more goals sure in this game but you know they've also scored more goals so you know big steps big steps in the right direction you know if they get a third goal here you know it's not going to be it's not going to be enough to change the complexion of this game but it could make the Rose rethink their strategy a little bit if they're getting beat all ends up here in this last minute and a half. Someone they can take some confidence in that going into the next game and you know, how, how do we do that? What, what do we do better here? And I know people might say, oh, the Rose knew they had the game one took the step, step off the gas. I don't think we would have gone 6-0 if they're doing that. So I think someone would have fought back somewhere. They made someone level adjustments here. They made it more difficult for their opponents. Yeah, and, 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 and my answer to that as well is, well, then why are they stepping off the gas? This is the RLCS. You can never step off the gas. It's kind of mm. like giving up on a goal where you where you think, oh, well, the opposition's obviously going to score now because I whiffed, I missed or whatever. But you always got to be rushing back. You always got to be stepping on the gas. And they do it here, 7-2. So a, a dominating win. So whether they took their foot off the gas or not, they finish it with seven at least. Yeah, but again, it's, it's another problem I had with someone in the last series. That the third man commits far too heavily, and that leaves a, an open net there, and that's unfortunate. You know, you can't. I know you can send the house at some stage, but when you're on defense, no point in the house. You know, you just, just, just relax, calm down a little bit. You know, take your time. Don't worry too much what's going to happen. Just try and make sure you keep the ball away from your opponents. Try to keep the ball away from your net, and that's the main thing to do, really, when you're, when you're this this level down. All right. Well, the bros, I said in the last game, they if they take this series, it's either going to be three nothing, a three nothing win or a three nothing loss. And uh, the way it's going now, they should complete their work in the fifth round of Swiss to secure their spot in the quarterfinals tomorrow. Um, but it's not over yet. Maybe Sun Moon, a little bit of a fly in the ointment, maybe in game three. You never see what you do. I, I, I like to see more of this. It's been really high level rocket from both teams mm. at times. Both teams look really good. So I, I would not compare to see a game four. Uh, the bros don't want to see game four because that's, you know, then you're getting the sweaty territory. So, <laughs> you know, they want to finish it in three. But, you know, definitely, definitely the bros here look to finish this off. But Sun Moon have shown, you know, they're not a team to mess with. You know, they're a young team, they're a new team, and they're doing well. And they've got Jota as their coach, so they they will remain hopeful. I'd like them to. I'd like to see them take a game, but I think if Bros just keep on the pace they've been going, they should take this easily. But it ain't over till it is over. And the, and the plus side for Sun Moon, they did double up on this on their on their gold tally. They also went from one shot on goal to four, so they've they did improve. Can they improve further? Can they, if they lose this, can they at least keep it tight, keep it close? Yeah, that, 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 that's the main goal for them right now, is to try and make this as difficult as possible for the bros, make it as you know as hard a game as possible, just just really make it difficult. You know, and get some demos and bumps, you get some goals, do some flashy stuff, you know, do do the good stuff, you know. <laughs> that's one thing I haven't seen from them, is I haven't seen them use those bumps and demos. I know the bros are very fast, but at some stage, they have to stand still, and you'll see that a lot. And you see no boost here now for IBS, take him out of the play, get a bump, there you go. So you get physical with them, get in his face, don't let him have easy chances. I think that's a very solid point. Um, just disrupt the rhythm, disrupt the flow, because I think that has been a struggle 
for for the bros as a team in terms of their team unity and maybe oh that one almost fighting an open net but if you can disrupt their their rotation their rhythm of play and maybe tilt them a little you find an opening there so i think that's a that's a solid call but here they come now with an offensive play five bs though we'll get it out but only as far as dilla wave but the intercept gets it right back and they're bullying again on the goal line, trying to create a chance for Christian to get something going. But Karma stands tall on the line, showing why there's no talent. Oh. But that's a lovely shot from 5BS. Defender is nowhere to be seen. It's 1 0. And again, Karma can't get the clear far enough. And 5BS just uh, picking an opportunity there, seeing the loose ball, picks it up, controls, shoots. 1 0 to the Bros. Oh, still. 51 seconds only gone on the clock still plenty of time for Sun Moon if they want to have a chance to fight back but they, you feel they need to get the next goal you feel they need to, to be the ones mm. being the aggressors being in that position you know, having that precision over power that speed over anything else but can they do it they're in a good position now though pass center but it's only going as far as Christian not the pass we wanted there Dilloway smart play there saw what was coming avoids the demo avoids the dunk very well done by him yeah, the, so they have scored in every game of Sun Moon, but they've left it. They've done it very late in the game. And to your point, a little bit, an earlier goal here to level it up might give them a little bit of in, in, enough juice, enough confidence to, to make things a little uncomfortable for bros as they launch another attack, another pressure play. And Karma now looking to control it better. Does well on the first touch. The second touch is going to give it away. There's been a demo on the goal line. The goal is open for now. Can Yopego get there quick enough? Oh, save. no, great save and clear. Yeah, that was a lovely little save there. Now, out of position, out of rotation. That's a great demo from Christian. No one following it, though. And here's a chance. That one downfield, but it's going to just fade wide, Christian. Don't worry too much about it, but here comes Sirex. Looking for this one center. Does very well indeed. Pass. Oh. Great demo. Can he follow up? They got a touch, though. Christian with a brilliant pre-jump flies into that ball. Makes it difficult for Karma. For sorry, Sirex to do anything with that. And that's great play from the bros. Very good defense. Yeah, but it was such a good play in attack. Uh, they did everything right except get the ball on target and into the net. And then Yopego having a long clear, missing an open net. But I don't think 5BS is going to miss this. Surely not. And no, he doesn't. 5BS carries it in. And it is 2-0 to the bros. Fields backlit, man. As the backlit comes in, 5BS oh. there. Bit taunting, perhaps. Karma almost got there in time. But it doesn't matter. The ball still in the net. Still the same result. 2-0 to the bros up. But half the game left to play. But keep it close so far, Sullivan, which is good to see. Keeping it close, but they are behind. And maybe it's just a case of finding improvement in every game. Your Pega with a miss, Chris with a miss. Sirix has a sight on net, but 5BS gets back for the clear. That would have made things very interesting. Bring it back to a one goal game. Might just <laughs> give Sun Moon a little bit of a, a, a little bit of boost to move themselves forward. Yeah, but they've been playing really well this game, actually. They look really good in attack. Made it really difficult for their opponents here to uh, to get anything going rhythm rhythmly uh, as they try here the ball come up the backboard again. The little float about well cleared this time by Karma. Shoot five BS off the build from the back here. Clears this one towards the with the cherry pick perhaps there was his ball, but Karma will follow this ball looking for the flip reset. No, it looks for the pass instead. <laughs> and then the one two just didn't quite work out. It was good effort, good idea, but just not the wrong execution. All right, well it is the bros firmly in control of this right now but sun moon are fighting back they are making it just a little bit more difficult we're not seeing the massive goal line we saw seven goals from bro in game two five in game one only two so far and 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 that'll be good if they can keep it keep it tight keep it close at least and then take their lessons from this regional for their team going forward because it's uh, as i've said before we need we need the Reunion Islanders here. They have given so much to Rocket League, and I would love to see them succeed further. Yeah, it'd be great to see. Interesting choice there. Looking for the pass when the shot was on. Perhaps could have gone for the shot there, but decided to go for the pass. And the pass comes off, it's a goal. So, right idea. Uh, just not enough power in the ball. But here's a chance now to pull back, perhaps. But well, then I by 5 bs has been a really good player in this series so far. He's been really consistent, created so many opportunities for his teammates being a disruptor in defense as well. That one might just be a no well denied by Christian W. All right. Well, we're coming. Uh, there's been so much pressure on that Sun Moon net. They have had to defend <laughs> and defend and defend. It is 
uh, if there was a heat map, all, all the red would be over over on the uh, on the Sun Moon side. They've had brief four, forays out, even an opportunity or two. We come down to the last 15 seconds, and there's good news and bad news. They haven't scored in this game, but my word, they didn't concede more than two, at least not with five seconds to go. Yeah, can they get one here for the road? Just one for the road, finish it out. Of course, they're going. We're going to see them in two weeks' time. Anyway, the pros will take it in a series sweep, three to nil, scoring score their opponents by 14 goals to three. So, really, really clinical performance from them. Yeah, very good from the pros, and 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 their uh, sequence continues. Uh, sweep or be swept, and they they've managed to do it three times, and uh, and that's enough to see them into the quarterfinals. So they go further than they have. So this is this is much better for the bros. Um, but and Sun Moon, I think they've done themselves incredibly proud. First by getting here, two by taking down two series. So big up to them, and can't wait to see them again. Morky, or is oh, that me? Sorry, oh. <laughs> oh, I got lost there for a second. I, was just I, 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 I didn't know. I didn't know if you were lost or I was lost. But I'm glad it's not me, and neither is no. it you. You are no. here. No, no Proxy's back as well. But that's what you really nice to see. Thank <laughs> you for coming back. Nice to see you back again, Proxy. How are you doing? How did you find that series? Yeah, no, I thought I should just jump in. It looked, it, it looked like you guys were a bit confused there. Don't worry, it's fine. I'm here. <laughs> Don't worry about it. Now that was what an emphatic finish there from the Bros. My goodness, I mean, starting with a five-one, I think that's really what shook, you know, Sun Moon saying, "Oh, okay, this mm -hmm. is this is a completely different competitor. This is a completely different game." Because as we mentioned, Morky, you know, moving into this game, they had that lead, they had that game to jump on in, they had that momentum to carry on forward, but the Bros just got a 5-1, got a 7-2, and I, it was pretty much done for them. For you, Moki, was that was that really the turning point when you saw those first couple of goals, you know, moving on in? Is that where we saw Sun Moon maybe making a little bit of a shake? Uh, yeah, I think so. I think defensively, they looked okay at the start, but then they made some errors kind of when they went down 2-0. They were worried about conceding more goals. I mean, worried about conceding more goals. You're not know, thinking about how do I how do I outplay this and thinking about, I just have to get this clear now. I see ball, hit ball is what I said during the cast. Mm -hmm. And that's what they were doing a little bit too much. Uh, and that time they're just passing the ball to the bros. The bros are like, thank you very much. I'm going to score from this. And that's exactly what they did. Well, as we know, we, we have to give a little bit of love there to the Reunion Island. I mean, Greybeard, for them to come mm. all the way through into this point, for them to actually qualify and get to this stage in the first place is already something that that really deserves a round of applause. But also their final finish, their final series, just a few shining moments that's really stood out for you, Greybeard. What, what were we looking at? I think just I, I think the spirit of of, of, of what we we saw from them and how far they've come and and uh, off stream I've been chatting on Discord with their coach Jota um, and and this is a good result for them it is progress they did better than the last regional um, and 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 this is something a, a foundation on which they can build so only only strength to strength for them and uh, um, but but they fall short here and now we can look forward to the quarterfinals that are coming up tomorrow. Our final eight are almost decided. I think we're just waiting on the Apex Lupo Rosso game, which Apex should win, but who knows? There might be an upset. I mean, we saw May Contain Nuts go down. They finished fourth in the Swiss. It's almost unheard of. So there has been at least a little bit of chaos. There's, there's been a lot of chaos for me personally. I mean, moving on into these matches, I've been on the edge of my seat. I've nearly fallen off my chair. It, it, it has been a fantastic finish so far. But as we can see, a few of those confirmations coming on through. Astronic and, of course, uh, Sun Moon, as we just witnessed, they will be finishing off their series. Just waiting for Apex and Lupa Russo. So Triple M definitely still keeping the keen eye on what's going to be happening on that series. But so far, it has definitely been a few surprises and a few well, very interesting points. I mean, having Orlando Pirates being one of our first teams quite qualified for today having reformed uh, honestly I, mm. wow i mean that it's ridiculous to think that that's what we were going to be having at the end of the day but nevertheless of course they have to come back tomorrow they have to come back on sunday hopefully maybe and really showcase those skills so moving into this fantastic series morky mork final thoughts of the ssa region final thoughts of how these teams have brought forth uh, a very surprising set of games for you to cast today um, it's it's nice to see SSA becoming a region uh, and not just South Africa. 
I, I'm mm. not, that's, that's my big goal takeaway from this. It's, it's seeing all these players in different countries in South, South, South Africa, showing what they're made of, showing how good they are, how talented this region is, how stacked it is when you look at it compared to other regions. Like, like I don't know, I think some of these teams can fit into Mina. You know, some of these teams go to other, other regions and do really well, do some damage. And that says a lot. You know, this time last year, I wouldn't have said that. This time this year, mm. I'm saying it. I think some of these teams would go into other regions and cause havoc and make regionals and cause upsets. Um, and that's a positive. Um, as, as an Irishman, as man from EU, you know, to be part of the scene is incredible. You know, again, smallest region, biggest hype. Uh, they're incredible <laughs> and it's fantastic to see and I love to be part of it. So, so what I'm going to take away from that is that SSA have uh, creeped into your heart and we've found a little bit of a place to stay there. I'm loving it. I'm happy with it. Graveyard, I'm sure that means quite a lot for you moving on in, watching the scene grow and mm. really watching, you know, a little bit of the fruits of the labor that these teams have been putting in now finally coming to fruition. Absolutely, you know we're 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 easy to fall in love with. We just we just have to we just have to lure them in. Once they hear that, we'll, we'll never get rid of them. But uh, but listen, great performances all round. There were uh, teams like Sun Moon making it in when they didn't. They fell short before. We've got a tiebreaker coming up. How cool is that? The first time we're seeing that. Three teams vying for that last slot, and then two new teams will make it into the quarterfinals who weren't there at the last regional already. Uh, who was it that's just made it through? Of course, well, the bros. The bros are there. And then either Lupo, Rosso, Apex, who didn't make the quarters last regional, will be there tomorrow. We have uh, rematches coming up. Rematches coming up between Pirates and uh, Red Crown, potentially. May contain nuts. White Rabbit Gaming may contain nuts and reformed a potential rematch in the semis. So, a massive weekend coming up. But SSA continues to move forward. I couldn't have said it better myself. And that is going to bring us to the close of these series, these fantastic series that we brought through. And of course, that has been brought to you by ACGL and our fantastic admin team. We really couldn't do it without them. So massive shout out ACGL. to the gents in the back end, really making it happen and making it work. So that is going to be the end here for myself as proxy. And of course, our final words from our fantastic casters, Morky Mork and Gravia. Thank you so much for joining us today. And thank you for supporting these teams. They truly do deserve it. And until tomorrow, stay tuned to hopefully to see you back tomorrow, bringing a little bit of popcorn, maybe a few drinks, because the action is going to be quite spicy. We'll see you then. Peace.